geocaching is. We're having Neo, real audio. Geocaching. Oh, is that what you said? Geocaching. So okay. you, uh, you basically, you follow a GPS location on your phone to, uh, to somewhere in the countryside. And then there's like a little treasure box and you're supposed to swap something out for like a button for a penny. But that something. sounds to me like a game because it's an activity. No, it's more like just... a hobby. It's more like a walk. Well, that's the thing with Pokemon Go. It's like... It's, it's more like a walk. It's a walk, but it's... Let's call it augmented reality. You see, look, you're 434, Kim Kardashian Hollywood for the what Android is iOS. That? Well, I know, I, when I, uh, a few years ago... Immediately people downloaded always, it. <laughs> yeah, people were always talking about it like it was, like, addictive. I suppose if something's addictive like that, then, I mean, I don't, again, I don't know the criteria. Do you think list. Kim Kardashian's game has options where you can buy it using real money? Yes, like, without a doubt. To upgrade Kim's Course. Chihuahua to a diamond-studded Chihuahua. Yeah, because it's a phone game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it'll have um, microtransactions. I know because they, they all do. I really wonder what that could be and what those transactions could be. It'll be oh, um, you know, you spend all this money to get I don't know Kim bucks or something, Kim bucks. whatever the in-game currency is, and there'll be an option which is spend ninety-nine dollars to get all these Kim bucks, and that's the best value one. In my mind, a Kim buck is just the currency of North Korea. Yeah, Kim buck too. Yeah. <laughs> How much is that? It's a Kimbuck too. Yeah. What's the exchange rates? <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> so, wrestling games, the common denominator of podcasts always get a wrestling reference. Mm. Reference. Yeah, so my favourite wrestling game ever, No Mercy for the N64, is on yeah. here. That uh, is a great game. Because I think it was the first one where like it became, you just, you never play with the roster. You play with your you own character, your own. and you make your own roster. Yeah, you make and the then... ma- maximum weights so they can never get suplexed. No, no, no. See, because if you did that or on No Mercy, darkness. eventually you would lift them, and it would drain all your health and give them an immediate special. So mm. it was pointless to do the super heavyweight option, but it did have a... You just got to finish the match quickly, then. Wow, true. Would you would you make yourself, or would you be making... Uh, you see, who, I made myself, and on my roster, I was the commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what we did... How sad is this, right? So we would put our teams against each other, but we'd use the AI to fight each other instead of us and watch who won, which in hindsight, right. that was Wait, just... Compl- what, so you were like doing like fantasy booking almost? Yes, pretty much. But then that using the AI sounds really characters. fun. With shared titles. Yeah, that so sounds like, really I had, fun. <laughs> it sort of was, but it was also with the AI, I don't think how good your character actually mattered. I think it was a whole sort of luck thing. and Yeah. But it was really cool because obviously you could go, right, I'm going to have my character, David John, yeah. Who was so DJ. your character was called David No, John. I made a character called David John so I could call him DJ as nice. his initial. Wow. Because oh, <laughs> on the game, is that where they had the announcers could call your character by their nickname if you gave them one? Yeah, but the N64 one, wisely, they took out the announcing. So it's say. just crowd noise and a like grungy background music, mm. yeah, which I think is much better. Because sm- Smackdown <laughs> and like... I know, well, I, I know Attitude, I don't know, if, I don't know if Warzone did, but they had. Warzone I definitely know, did. Warzone had JR and Vince McMahon, but the commentary would always be delayed. So if you go to the top rope... My God! Yeah, well, no, the thing is, it would be on time, but if you had a really sort of... You so were packs. bashing buttons, um, like you go to the top rope, come off and go, He's begun his ascent! <laughs> like, like, two minutes later. That's, that's why I liked on uh, Smackdown, because... What, Here Comes the Pain? No, 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 the first one. That or, was great. Or, 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 or yeah, second, Here Comes the Pain was amazing. Or the second one, was like, Just Bring It, where... They had set commentary lines, but there were gaps where you could put in stuff so it would be like personalised. Yeah. But it wasn't very seamless. But how so, do they do that? Because it's it's no, vocal. So, so in, yeah. in your creator character, you'd be like, my name is called Declan John, and yeah. his nickname is The Beast. Why well, did you have a DJ as well? No. Yeah. But I've just you know following the theme. <laughs> and so you'd have like a finisher and say, oh, so your finisher's a pile driver. Yeah. The audio would go, his pile driver is great by The Beast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had, uh, what was it? I had uh, Goku and Gohan because you could get their hair to stand wow. together. So I had separate costumes. There was normal and then there was the costume where they I were mean, blonde. You'd like to know, Craig, that I made my own guy on uh, Smackdown vs. Raw, I think 2007. Um, he looked like me. and Actually. But taller? A little bit taller, yeah. yeah. Not as buff. <laughs> a little bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, at the time, I was wearing a t-shirt quite a lot because you know me, sometimes I wear a t-shirt and you're like, oh, I've seen Tom wear that t-shirt before because I only have one or two nice t-shirts. Yep. Um, at a the conversation time, we frequently have, obviously. Mm. Well, at the time, you'll get a kick out of this, What if you can guess what band t-shirt it was. Because, um, I, I mean... Idlewild? No, no, no. It's very much of 2007 and I'd like to tell you I would not wear it these days. The kooks? No. Worse than that. Uh, much worse than that. Oh, I don't know. Hardfy? Oh, no. No, much worse. No, it's <laughs> not. Hardfy bad? Not, it's not, not embarrassing. 
it's worse. You work. wouldn't wear it outside. Lost profits. A lost profits. I was going to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was. It was a lost profits T-shirt that said the words Ooh. "Mega Lols" on the front. Mm. See, I don't remember why, <laughs> but I used to wear that all the time. See, and this was at six four. See, I'd tell you about the time that I was, was in a club, DB's Western, classic place. T-shirt way too tight for me. Standard. Got to pop that on. The more things change. Uh, yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> Older now, Mark. Got to wear them a bit looser. <laughs> too much, too much girth. Um, but uh, so I went to the DJ and I was like, "Can you put on rooftops where lost profits?" And he looked at me like I'd pissed on his kids. What year was this? So it was just after he'd um, that he'd been sort of caught, and he was like, "You should pay more attention." I was like, "What? what? I'm drunk." You're not like, crossing the road, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. so I got told off for it, but yeah. But then you're like, "Oh, okay, fine. Just put some gang glitter." Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> My gang. Oh, I love the Who. <laughs> Rock and roll part two. Wait, surely. no, it's yeah. been, has it been proven against the, I, the Who? I, don't. I mean, I think you, it, a lot went on. It, I, was, I, it was the 60s, right? I can't remember. Didn't he say he was doing it for research? Yes. Which well, is the standard. But research, the standard into, research into what? If he was abused himself, yeah. that's usually so that's the, the excuse. You know the guy who's in the thick of it the first season? Yeah, uh, yeah Chris. And it's a shame because he's not really Packham. funny. I've made that mistake before. Is it Langham? Yes. Yeah, he said his was to do with research. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, you is would... there an excuse that might hold up? Um, Asking for a friend. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I, had, I left my computer on and a flock of birds flew in and walked all over my keyboard. And would you believe it? They went on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, I just think you're just going to have to own up and say... Wow. Kitty fiddler. I was really hoping you would say something there that we could cut out and then sort of edit. Mm. No, no. I, like I feel so. this is my fault, but at the same time, Craig's just going on. I'm, not, I'm yeah. just saying, like, because you, know, you always get the excuses. Like, oh, it did, because obviously, the thick of it, first season, I was like, maybe he's not, and maybe it's okay to continue liking him, because I genuinely like him in that, in that series, because he's quite a what bumbling I... fool, and it's like, as long as I don't have to feel guilty that he's a massive paedophile. What I would say, <laughs> and I think this should be the last word on the subject of paedophiles, is he looks like one. Mm. So well, the thing about paedophiles... Well, he doesn't have a moustache, and I thought moustache <laughs> was he the... Looks, he looks sweaty, though. Because November, he, they're in their best element, because he, they can blend right in. Does he own a van? <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we, just don't, we just don't know. While, while we're on the subject, how does libel work? <laughs> um, which one's written... Is that slander? Can you imagine? Chris, is, it libel, is it libel if you write it? I think libel is written slander. Chris yeah. not Packham, maybe Langham is, Chris you know, Packham, he's not got Langham. a lot to do these days. He's not getting a lot of work. And somebody goes, well, he have you of, heard this podcast? He gets yeah. a lot of yard time, I think. You don't believe yeah. it. These guys are calling you a nonce. Yeah. <laughs> so just going back to the video game list before yeah. uh, alienate any listeners. <laughs> any <laughs> listeners who are nonce. Devil May Cry 1. <laughs> before we alienate our pedophile <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Devil May Cry Oh, I just got to finish my act there, but no mercy, actually. So you know you said the fantasy booking art oh, sounds really fun. It, it actually fun, was yeah. quite fun. But what I did was I had a little notebook about who had what title. Really? Yeah. You literally were booking. Yeah. You yeah. had the book. Well, it was the three of us. And I also, using my built in T V V C R recorded the matches. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Do you still have them? Yes, somewhere. Oh god, can we watch them? Oh, do you know what? No, I think they got binned recently. My oh. mum did a clear out of the garage. Yeah. Sad. I'd like to watch them, I but then well. have Craig do commentary. <laughs> yeah. Well, that thing is No Mercy that was really good is you could do this thing where you could do that you do different combos. So you could get them on your shoulders, and then there were uh, the top rope moves. Then they could jump to the in, from the outside to the inner. Yeah. You just do loads of cool shit. Basically. I mean, I mean, that was why I always found it difficult was because of all the inputs you had to do to get a move. Like, do you remember trying to do the people's elbow? Yeah. It was like you had to do the taunt and then run off the ropes and then press the button. But it was cool because you could do that, but then you could change the move he does when he lands with the elbow. So yeah. I think I did. There was one for the, the people's leg press. drop. You do it the corporate elbow. Yeah. It no, you didn't even do that. It could the just be a move. Yeah. So I think one of my guys did a moonsault. The people's uh, five yeah. knuckle shuffle. Whereas, yeah. on, whereas on SmackDown, the PlayStation, it was L1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the cool thing was to do your special because you could use the joystick to do a special and you had to do a strong grapple. But you could do it, you had specials firm if you got them in a reverse lockup, lockup, in the corner, on the top. So it was really, it was a great game. I think that's what the games do now, though. But I remember because it was... SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, you They're very holes, fast now. But you could do loose movements as well, so, and you could lift them and throw them wherever. Yeah. Here's how fast they are now, and not sound like an old git, but like, I, like No Mercy is so slow. 
But it was really a kind is. of like you could. There was a, people still do mods of No Mercy. Oh. I don't know who these people are. Probably the same people who do fantasy booking for their N sixty four games. Mm. But um, with their friends. So the <laughs> other games that I and played, re- wrestling wise, did you do? So we talk about Here Comes the Pain. That was the last SmackDown game that I got really into. I thought we're going back to the list because now you're well, just no, doing. Because no, a... you said Here Comes the Pain. I was yeah, like, you're that just was doing a, a, a podcast now on your favourite wrestling games. Yeah, <laughs> it is going to be. A... Which are essentially any wrestling game you've played. You've all right, played. okay, any, right. So any, and all wrestling did games. you play Devil May Cry? Because that's on here in the. No. No, I've so, never played it. Um, really I did play. It. Is that Just Cause Three? Mm. I did play that. Fallout Four in the top in the five hundred to four. So also in the top four hundred. Well, I was, I was just going to say. Speaking of Skyrim, I think I own Skyrim on three different consoles. I own it on Xbox and PS4. I've got it on the Switch, PlayStation VR, and Xbox. <laughs> So, and I've shown no signs of stopping. Yeah. <laughs> Things I played it. I, I got it when they remastered it on the PlayStation, but I, I had played it so much on the Xbox by that point where. You've hardly played it what, now. It's like, got the remastered. It's like once the initial, like, wow, the graphics are great, I can do mods, mm. wore off. It was like, ah, this is all stuff I've done before. I mean, how much do you bother playing it differently as well? Because. Um, quite a lot. I'm always like, oh, I need a guy with a sword or a two handed sword. And then I play it again and I'm like, hmm. Probably skip the sword again. No, I've gone. I'll do. I'll do like sword and shield, and then I'll do another one that's magic, and then I'll do what everyone else does and make a stealth archer because that's the yeah. best way to play the game. <laughs> You're just unstoppable, just going through caves, sneaking sh- around, shooting, shooting arrows at people. No, see, I always tend to just go the same hack and slash, keep it simple. Yeah, but it depends how much you want to think about. It, it depends how slow you want to take there's it. There's stuff. There's stuff in that game. It's it's like in the older Elder Scrolls games. You could make your own spells and things mm. like that. And that would allow you to basically break the game. Yes. Because you could do things like, okay, I've made a ring which increases my enchanting ability, which makes me make strong spells. So I can make a really strong enchanting spell that I can cast on myself. And it just goes on like that. And so you have a spell which has like 9,000 damage and just breaks the game. See, the problem with that is, like, on the list also was Splinter Cell. Which is really, really enjoyable. It is. But yeah. after a certain while, I can't really be bothered to sneak around. Yeah, you that's... Know, it's, it's fun to do the splits between the wall where you're hanging above the ceiling <laughs> and you drop onto a guy and break his neck. Yeah. But then after a while, you get bored of throwing cans and waiting for people to come and investigate. I think that, Then there's stuff like Metal Gear Solid where that never wears off for me. Yeah, but then Metal Gear Solid, you can, there's the chance to change it up. Didn't instantly. that start as a Nintendo game? Metal Gear Solid. Um, is this, is it, no, is it, it, Sega? It, was, it was on some mental console called like the MSX or something. I might Google it. Who makes it? Is it? It's not Nintendo. Is it Sega? Um, Konami. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. yeah. So is it David Hater who does the voice? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Metal yeah. Gear. Has there ever been a Metal Gear Solid film? No, everyone says there is. But think well, about... if you watch Escape from New York, that's essentially the same character. Yeah, Snake Plissken. Um, I don't think he'd be an enjoyable character in a film. Uh, he is a really enjoyable character. But yeah, but, the thing but is... it's very much of its time, the Snake Plissken yeah. character. Mm. They've kind of moved it into a wacky... I mean, I've, from what I've seen, Metal Gear is... To try and jump in and no, watch no, someone no, play no, it no, from no, four no, or five. I mean, Snake Plissken, that's, the ca- that's his name in Escape from New York. But all the traits you associate with Snake Plissken are in Snake. Eh, not really. Solid Snake. He's got an eye patch. But the eye patch, he's got, got the voice. Big Boss has an eye patch. The v- voice Big Boss, I think, is the Lee Van Cleef character from Escape from New York. I might in the wrong. first one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um... I got one for you, Tom. Star yeah. Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords at 403. Is that the one you're always banging on about? Well, that's the second one of the KOTOR series. Yeah, one's pretty higher up. And one is higher up, because I remember it in the list. But also, two is excellent. So what is, it, what is it? It's not a first uh, third person sort of hack and slash there. No, so it's an RPG, but the um, all the all the hits are decided by the computer. So you just engage in the battle and then let it take its own course. Yeah, it's Bioware, isn't it? Yes, but the point of it is you're, it's more about the storyline. So it's sort of set in the in the Old Republic completely before any of the Star Wars. So I've always had a pro- I've always had... <laughs> Sorry. I've always had a problem. The Star Wars, yeah. yeah no, thank you, man. <laughs> I've always had a problem with that because... Go see a Star Wars. The Star Wars games that are set before the films always look so much cooler and more... They are... And they, you always play it and you think they should make this into a TV show that's on eight parts on HBO, and it never will But happen. they always try and yeah. do like what the technology looked like before the film set in the future, and should the we... technology always looks so much cooler yeah, in the pre- which broad, makes no it's sense. It's broadly the same, but better. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> but in, so in this, basically, you know, there's more Jedi's and there's there's like wars going on. So you don't get stormtroopers, but you do get Sith. Yeah. So you get Sith do as you, opposed to no. Do you Sith. get like soldiers wearing white armor who are? No, the in s- essence, stormtroopers. In the first one, the Sith wear lovely shiny silver armor. Oh, okay, that's different. Um, <laughs> and you're basically you you have Jedi powers, but uh, do you have, have to play as a Jedi? No, you can play. You can have a blaster. Oh, cool! But right. you get force powers. Yeah. And the thing of the thing of it is, if you start training with a blaster and they give you a lightsaber, you're gonna why wouldn't you use a lightsaber? Yeah. But I don't know. There's a whole Indiana Jones argument to be made. Yeah. No, but then I played uh, the Dark Forces games, which are really old, dated now. But like, you could use like lightsaber was like the weapon you get at the end. So it's any mm. first person. You slowly work your way through as the game progresses, yeah. the better and better weapons. Well, but playing with a blaster mm. and shooting stormtroopers is still really cool. That's what was good in the Phantom Menace PS One game. Is because you had a lightsaber, but you could also pick up guns. Mm. So you'd be Obi Wan or Qui Gon running through Mos Eisley with a shotgun. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> the point of the Kotor ones is you can play good or evil. So and naturally, you went evil, surely. Cause no, because you always do evil. good. You always do good on the first walkthrough. You do, yeah. So like, there's these there's these thugs assaulting a man for credits. So you're like, back off! I'm with this guy, and you can either pay the debt, kill the thugs. That's the sort of good side thing. Oh, or join the thugs. Or you could join the thugs. Yeah. Or what well, my personal favourite is to threaten the thugs. That's bad. That's bad. That's dark side. You kill the thugs. Dark side. Then the old man's like, "Thanks very much, guys." And you're like, "Now give me your credits." And when he's like, oh, "I haven't got any credits," you kill him as well. Dark side. Yeah. So that's my favourite <laughs> thing is when you sort of get everyone involved. Yeah. I don't know. You think about the dark side of the movies. I never thought of the dark side as like mugging people. It, 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 you know, the force was a lot more spiritual. Well, I never that. thought yeah. the dark side was cooler in the films, but in video game, it's infinitely more cool. Yeah. Well, like lightning, lightning is is cool because how do you use push. a Jedi mind trick in a game and make it exciting? Oh, you do it in conversation, you see. Yeah, that's uh, so you have okay. you have battles and you have conversations, so you can use it to get information or to get to get higher rewards, that sort of stuff. Hmm. But there, you get one playthrough. You would get good side. You'd get no, twenty five hours. Mm. And dark side, you'd get like fifteen hours, because you don't have to do fetch quests as the dark side. You yeah. just you just kill people. Yeah, and there's always the, like the, the the light side quests always feel a bit lame. So like, help this farmer. Yeah, and it's always like you go and you rescue his moisture generator from some wolves, <laughs> as opposed to just killing him. Yeah, from... like, he's always slightly less fun. <laughs> go lend a hand at Toshi Station. But you Toshi get Station. you get to crowd your followers. It's all good. It's in that same vein as Mass Effect, which is also in the list. Oh, uh, here's one, a blast from the past. Uh, a couple of them, but Mass Effect, you have to follow the same basic ending. Yeah, because like you're, 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 you're not good at evil. You're like, yeah, you're a loose cannon cop, or you're a by the books cop. Yeah, or you're boring. Yeah, but whereas in Kotor, you do get to control the whole <laughs> universe through your Sith powers. Yeah, which sounds a bit more fun. Did you ever play Lemmings as a kid? Yes. yes. Did you ever work out what you were supposed to be doing? Not really. Like, no, yes. No. Yeah, I... I <laughs> no, but I mean at age eight, when like, you've no, got I, Sonic I, the Hedgehog, you get kind of a bit fed up with that after, if you're like me, playing it forever, and then you put Lemmings on, and you're like, I don't really yeah, know what's this, happening. This is too much finesse. I played yeah. it at 12, and once you work out the idea behind it, it's quite fulfilling, because you have to get over these obstacles using different types of Lemmings. Yeah, as long as they can tunnel and stuff. Aren't yeah, they? they tunnel, they jump, they bridge, they blow up. I'm like gonna make you... myself sound silly now. Are lemmings real? Yes. Yes. Doing of but the they don't actually kill themselves yeah. by jumping off cliffs. And they're not yeah. little men. Really. And they don't have like pickaxes and no, parachutes they don't have and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have blue shirts and green hair. That was a yeah. Disney contraption, having them jump off a cliff. Yeah. Walt in his infinite wisdom. When what what Disney it, contraptions? There, um, I, don't... I, I think it was. I can't remember film was. It might be like the Nook of the North or something. I don't know, but basically, people think lemmings throw themselves off walls, and that's why the saying exists. Mm. But basically, Disney rounded the load up and threw them off, threw or them off drove them threw off, off a cliff. Wall. Yeah, yeah. Mm. like how they used to hunt buffalo, essentially. <laughs> so See, you're okay. skipping through a lot there. Well, I am. I'm because you can't do them all. So I like. I think a lot of the ones you're skipping past are ones you just don't like. Uh, no, yeah, like, cause, like, I was going to pick. Actually, I tried to bring it up earlier. Is Tony Hawk's? Well, I just I never played Tony Hawk's. See, this I just one's saw free. That, so and... at three, four, eight. You've got the third one, which is. Number three is in there. I thought it was two. I always remember two. Under- was two. Big one. No, three is in there. Underground is in there, and I'm pretty sure number one is also in the list. Oh, I, 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 which... What was the one where you could be Darth Maul at one point if you wanted to be? That was number. Wasn't two. the one where you could be Fred Durst, or is that SmackDown, Smackdown where you could be Fred yeah. Durst if you, for some reason, would want to be? Yeah, Fred uh, Durst, what, yeah. What you had to do was you had to. There was an Iron Man mode where you had to, like people would just come and come and come. So you'd beat them, another one would come. 
So you had to play The Undertaker and beat 20 people. And then you'd unlock Fred, Fred Durst. Durst. Who would drive... So did they have the rights to roll in when yeah. they did it? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if you haven't got the rights to roll in, you don't yeah. want to be Fred Durst. I'm pretty sure Fred Durst finished in that game was with the last ride as well. I think he was just Undertaker in a different costume. More or less. There's yeah. a great moment in WrestleMania 19 where after that, yeah. after um, Limp Bizkit had long sort of their five minutes were over, uh, he plays Undertaker of the Ring and WWE um, okay. announces... They're the most popular they've ever been. What, in 2003? No. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying they're a big deal now. Oh, I see. They're not. No, I know. Do you think Last Fred w- Durst... Well, I just got finished with story. WWE but goes. That's oh, we're just gonna well, so probably just move on. From we're that, just yeah. gonna go. Uh, uh, we'd like to welcome Limp Biscuit, our favourite band in the world, and then Undertaker comes in the ring. He gives Fred Durst like that bro hug. Oh, oh that's, yeah, that's terrific. Anyway, sorry, I had to get that out there. Uh, so back to Tony Hawk's, as we were discussing. Mm, yeah, no, sorry. They're great. I know you don't like them. You never played them. Well, I, I just, I just did, wasn't a PlayStation person. So, and I believe it or not, didn't skate a lot. In well, my I was going to say, it's hard to believe. At so. age eleven, I bought a skateboard for ten pounds. Yeah, we all. I was pretty rad. Yeah, I wore big DC shoes. I watched Jackass. I had DC shoes. I had Jackass. I had a little <laughs> chain that connects your wallet yeah. to your trousers. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah, you yeah. were like eleven. I was like fourteen. So yeah. I was too old yeah. for that shit. I had Pokemon cards. So I had three quarter length <laughs> trousers as well. Did yeah, three quarter length. Yeah, I had big shorts. And uh, we used to go up and down in a straight line because we couldn't really turn and we couldn't mm. really do any jumps mm. and then go home and play Tony Hawk's which was awesome yeah. I, used to, I, I used to listen to some 41 yeah I had to, <laughs> I had Tony Hawk's on the Playstation and then when I was 15 I had a Nokia N-Gage oh yeah baby and that why had, where does the N-Gage come into it I had Nokia uh, well, a Nokia N-Gage had the screen in the middle Buttons to the top and buttons to the bottom. That and it had, horrible. It had like a D pad to the top. It was, horrible. and then the keypad to the bottom, and you could turn it sideways, and you'd play it essentially like you would play a switch, a phone now. Oh. Yeah, where you'd use the left hand side. As- there you go. So the end gauge had the screen in the middle, D pad to the left, controls to the right with the number buttons. You know, two is up, yeah. eight is down, or whatever. How was it as a phone? Uh, well, it was quite big, but, you know, it was 2005. I was trying to make an input. I was letting yeah. people know I was out there. But the best I'm thing... i a hip-happening guy with new technology. I mean, the best thing about it was, if you wanted to change the game, because it was on, like, a little SD memory card. wasn't it? Yeah, SD memory card yeah. cartridge. You had to undo the phone back, take the battery out, then take the thing out, and then put the cartridge in. Ooh. So, so, that... so if you're out and about with it, you've got to make a commitment quite early on. As to what game you will be playing today. Well, I never had it, but I'm sure you could get a lovely... You know those little carrier cases you can get yeah. for like any any Nintendo product that is yeah. portable? You get a lovely little carrier case. And there sure, little sleeves in it for your cartridges. Yeah, I'm sure there was little sleeves in there for the cartridges. Yeah. I mean, just just thinking back at the, at the games, Tony Hawk's, obviously great, on the list several times. <laughs> uh, Tomb Raider, great, on the list several yeah. times. Uh, Rayman Free. Sure, why not? Is this yeah. still the end gauge? Yeah. yeah, I'm just listing some of the, the hot you games. You can't use two lists. Some, That's chaos. Some, some of the benefits of the end gauge. Well, no, because some of these are on that that same list, so right. we're, we're just sort of skipping over Tomb Raider. You know, I never got Rayman. I always thought Rayman was really annoying, and um, the game sucked. The game was fine. No, I never really enjoyed it. It was too much of a old-school thing. By the time I was playing games, I wanted something more than Rayman. Oh, okay. No, because I was playing it when I was like five or six. No, see, I never played it. Yeah, around right like right the neighbour's house who had a PlayStation. I remember borrowing Final Fantasy VII from it, and I thought it was too hard. See, there's so many games in here that are new, and I just got no idea. Like Quadrilateral Cowboy for the PC. That's, that's a good name, but I don't, know, I don't know what it is. Uh, Dead Space, I never got into. No. Nah. Never nah. played that? No. No, it, it just came out when I didn't have time to play that game. Personal favourite of mine at 343, Roller Coaster Tycoon. <laughs> Never played any of the Tycoon games apart from SimCity. What about, what about, well, um, that wasn't a Tycoon game. Well, it's, it's, it's in the same vein, it's the same though, isn't it? Thing. What yeah. about like, Theme Hospital? Do you ever play that? Oh, everybody played no, Theme see, Hospital, yeah. surely. I was playing a different game, which is it's awesome. It's free now, I think. You can just... There's a game on the list that I was playing instead of Theme Hospital, and that's Dungeon Keeper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. yeah, that is yeah. on here. Correct. Yeah. So we were playing Dungeon Keeper non-stop, and that was the, sort of the same time that Theme Hospital, all mm. that sort of stuff, was out. Yeah. And we were more... We were Dungeon Keeper... In 1997, yeah, that is about the same time. Yeah. And and Dungeon Keeper 2, I still play every so often, because I have it on my on, laptop. I was about to ask, on what? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> did you ever, Rokus Tycoon, did you ever get the, you could download it 
Alton Towers as a roller coaster tycoon. No, no, well, I never. But I, I mean, I saw someone who did. Like and fully it was laid like, out. And... Yeah, but I don't know why you want it. Like, I mean, yeah. the whole point of roller coaster tycoon to me, and I never completed a mission successful because I was always trying to do stuff like make my roller coaster go underground. Well, cause what I would always do is open like the sandbox mode, whatever that was called, give myself unlimited money, and just try and make an insane roller coaster. Yeah, and it took me eight. It took me eight. But the weird thing is, you'd make something that looked great, and then they'd be like, "It's too exciting." Yeah, people won't go on. Yeah, because it. it took me ages to learn how to bank corners. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, going down you, to? yeah. You have to like sort of turn into the corner, otherwise, like the G's is too strong and people would die. Insane side going sideways, and people would think it was too exciting. Did you ever name too name your roller coaster is, humorously? Hmm? Such as like you could name toilet, so you could name your toilet take a shit, and then the person would go, "I don't want to take a shit yet." Yeah, and you, and ch- then, and you chuckle. Ah, oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was nineteen ninety nine. That was that was good stuff. All right, so this is one that you guys will oh, love. Dear. God of War on here. Ah, Sorry, three, two, two. Which one? The first one. That's on. It's on there as the first one, but yeah. number two. Surely is that also would be higher there. in terms if you were judging on influence and kind of how important it was. <laughs> well, one of those. number two appears on the list as well. You see, so it doesn't make any sense. Well, I thought I think the big ones have been one, and then they did three. I think one, three, and the latest one are the ones one, that two, I'm aware of. One, two, and three were all big, but the new one is mm, the biggest so fantastic. far. Now, I never played this one, but I always instantly remember and thinking it looked terrifying. Resident Evil 2 yeah, that's 301. What, that's what I said the other day. About, so, well, yeah, we well, had this discussion the other day, and we all agree it was terrifying. Yeah, when my brother was playing it, there's a scene at the start where you go into like a shop. Is it the gun shop guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, where yeah. the zombies crash through the window and eat it. That scared the living daylights out of me. Yeah. And I, just the bit where he says there's no, lead, no need for us to stay here longer than we need to. Yeah. Let's spin up, look for survivors. <laughs> As made famous by space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean that Resident Evil I was too young to play it at the time yeah, yeah. see so I the never first, the first 10 minutes of it so it was scary enough yeah. and then I sort of died so I never even, so never, get the, so never even saw the scary my, parts when I got my PC and it was a good PC at the time I like finally was allowed like something that was a bit up to date it was my Pentium 2 Packard Bell I don't know what that means right? uh, it's just a tower <laughs> do you remember before but all no, the computers I, I, you had were Dells yeah yeah that was it yeah Yeah. Well, I, had, I had Packard Bell Pentium 2 processor and uh, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. and my mum on Christmas Day goes, oh, well, your dad wanted to get you this game, but we thought this looked way cooler, and it was Titanic Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and what, sorry, what was the game your dad wanted to get you? Uh, Resident Evil 2. Nice, okay. good, good uh, decision. But mum got Titanic Adventure out of time, which is a, a game where <laughs> I, when I did it all properly, I was able to stop World War One and Two. Yeah. Hitler becomes an art dealer, and you're responsible for world peace I'm, in a separate time. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure that Hitler becomes an art dealer is is the happy ending there. Surely Hitler. Well, that's just that's just part of like the butterfly the effect because on one of them, like Germany gets the bomb. I don't know how all this relates to the Titanic, but it was right around the time Titanic was. I don't know. I still feel <laughs> like the happy ending there is Hitler dies in a car crash. Well, um, well like even if. Well, the thing is, we could get into a whole thing here about. Like, if he dies in a car crash at that point when he hadn't done anything yet, would it be a problem? Is that is it a difference? But then he was still going to do something. Guys, I want to I want to uh, talk about video games, not about the uh, oh, life of you Hitler. Talk about, not the life. They're of about like hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, let's just let's just ask Craig where he is on the list. So I'm now in the top three hundred. Already surpassed yeah. my favorite game of all time, I mean, or how, one of them. So I'm not going to talk about that just yet. How but, long? Uh, is this podcast going to be? Oh uh, well, we'll have to edit those. The microphone keeps cutting out. So yeah, but we're now at three hundred. It's been like forty-five minutes. Yeah. So we go. Well, you know, I'm going <laughs> to go. So Assassin's Creed never got into it myself. But again, I'm not a PlayStation again, which person. One? Uh, so that one was uh, no. There's uh, more than one on that list, but it's fun. But it's, four. It's, it's the pirate one, isn't oh, it? No, Black it, flag. It's fun, one. but it's very repetitive. And then after a while, the storyline stops. Just starts making no yeah, sense. Yeah, it's now one fully mental. So yeah. Like... So isn't it? You're not an assassin. You're actually in a VR type environment. So in the first one, right, I'll lay out the first one for you, and then we'll just go from there. So in the first one, you're some random guy off the street pulled in for a genetic experiment by this corporation mm. who is evil. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they right. they send you. They use your DNA to go back in time to find the memories of your ancestor. To look for something called the golden apple, which is the key to controlling apple of all... Eden, wasn't it? That was it, yeah. yeah. Which is the key to controlling all of history. Your ancestor was an assassin from the Assassin's Creed, 
who would protect the apple from the knights. So how can you go back in time via this corporation? You, cause, cause the the memories the, are in your DNA. Yeah, the, that the, makes the quality of the game is that DNA right. has memory, and also being an assassin is like a bloodline thing. Yeah. Also, your does Michael, anyone care about the storyline, or is it more let's go uh, and be no, cool as an assassin? The, the storyline was quite interesting until, until you three. get no, until you get about halfway through number one, where everyone starts to have magic powers and double cross each other. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. Because as an assassin, you're supposed to protect the weak, kill the Templars. Yeah. Makes sense, right? And protect Jerusalem for the truly, ha- truly, <laughs> the holy land that it is from the evil Christian invaders. Yeah, essentially. And then it just gets mental. But you're Michael Fassbender. Your dad is Brian Cox. And was it Brendan Gleeson? Oh, was it Brendan Gleeson? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. the film, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but... Right. <laughs> Just if you want to play it again, that's how you should imagine yourself. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to throw it back to you as well with 232 and 231, respectively, Mass Effect and Tomb Raider. So Mass Effect, again, I couldn't get into it. I just I never gave it time. Yeah, yeah. Mass this Effect, is the first one. So. Mass Effect, great. Just like KOTOR, but instead of the combat being the computer rolls a dice and determines how much you hit and if you miss, that sort of stuff, it's guns and you're shooting people. Yeah. So it's much more hands-on, but it's still storyline-based and it's still your actions and how you discuss things have an impact. And plus you can just bang or get all the dark secrets out of the rest of your uh, troop. <laughs> 227, Left for Dead 2. I mean, that was we, one of we my skipped Tomb Ra- We skipped Tomb Raider. You did Tomb Raider. I know, we yeah, did. We already talked about it. Uh, yeah, Left 4 Dead 2 was great. Do you remember? Did we, did we play that at uni, didn't we? Yeah, that was a real uni mm. game. And it was yeah. like, I was able to play with my friends back home at yeah. the time as well. So there was a lot of... What, what was the name of that mode again where you could play as the zombies... While, other, while the, the other team played as the survivors. I think it was like, um, no, I don't know. Because that was the know. best. No, see, I enjoyed going through the campaign because there was that one you had to go through the swamp and you had to conserve your rations on the way there, the stuff you'd yeah. pick up, you had to get them on the way back. No, but you could do that in this mode that I'm talking about. Did you? That's why it was so great. It was good, but the best one to always be would be the guy with the tongue because you could, tr- when nah. one of them straggled off, you could... Slowly grab them. H- um, hunters were good because if, if you like cornered someone and you managed to pin them down, they were dead. Mm. Like because there was there was always points where somebody like jumping over a wall or something, and if you got the last person, they even Valve were weird. It was Valve, wasn't it? It was Valve, yeah. It's like they do these games which people adore, and then they'll just abandon yeah. them. It's I don't know. Well, I'm sure there's stuff there that I don't really. Well, well, I think it's, it's a it, whole thing. It's because they, they made so much money doing stuff like Team Fortress mm. and what's that game like? What, Do- Do- Dota 2 or something whereas like, it's a simple game but they sell all these add-ons did they do Counter-Strike? yes yeah so that's a whole yeah thing. and they but... sell all these add-ons for money like cosmetic things and items so they don't, they don't need to make new games anymore they can just no, add but stuff also, to their old people game. still play Counter-Strike exactly like if you made Left 4 Dead free people would buy it they would play it and then they would stop when the next big thing came out yeah and then so unless you get enough people buying it straight away but then you've still got, even though no one's playing, you've still got to host all the servers. Yeah, and that's expensive. So it just, it's not as easy to make money from it these days as it would be. Yeah. Stop it. Why? Because I'm going to plug it in and out again. So did any of you have a Dreamcast? No. Or play the Dreamcast? I had a Dreamcast and it was amazing. So it's the best thing I've done... In life. I don't believe it. What about Shenmue? That is a game that I've heard a lot um, about. Well, I just... I mean, do you want to talk about the Dreamcast and how good it was? Well, no, it was or just one of Or do you want to just talk about games feel, on the Dreamcast? I feel like the Dreamcast is really, like, revered. People talk about it, go, oh, I had a Dreamcast, it was great. But it was the console before the big boom of, like, PS2s. The yeah. problem is, the PS2... I just say GameCube, which I don't think really had a boom. The thing is, I, I think it's revered in that sense no. of it's the one that got away, almost. It's it, like... It, it's didn't it, have PS... it was internet, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the you PS2 could... blew it out of the water, but it was the first one to have, like, internet and stuff. Um, it had a lovely big controller... And it had it had the there, there was that it was when Sega was still a player. It had yeah. the Nintendo style add-ons because you could get. I had amongst many of the games that I loved. I had Sega Bass Fishing, and you got a controller that re- was a fishing that. rod. I remember that controller. And you could cast with it because it had a motion detector in, so you could. Sort of <laughs> Why didn't like you that. just go fishing? Uh, because you can't catch bass in Essex. What was it called? <laughs> was, it, was it called Big Bass Fishing? No, it's called Sega Bass Fishing. Okay. And when you'd go. He'd shout, fish arm, when you got a fish. <laughs> and if you were just playing it casually, fish arm. he'd shout, nature nature, nature walk, or something like Did that. Did you throw the fish back? Or was um, it? Because it's very cartoony. I think it's a sport fishing game, so I think you'd catch them and throw them away. I don't think you eat them. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not like deadliest catch. But it had a lovely yeah. little reel on it as well, and you could yeah. get it up and, Oh, it was amazing. And then the little memories card thing, I had Tony Hawk's 2 on it, 
And on the memory card was a screen because you could use the memory card much like a Tamagotchi. It had a pedometer, didn't it? Or something? I'm not sure. It had a Tamagotchi on it. It might yeah. have had other things. So when you played Tony Hawk's, if you failed a trick, it would call you a loser. Mm. And when you played Sonic Adventure, possibly one of the best games I'd ever played. That's just wrong. Especially at the time, it was amazing. It's so bad. It was really good. <laughs> so many options, so many characters. All the little things that you find on Sonic Adventure when you destroy the robots, you bought them back to a little sanctuary that Sonic ran, apparently, where there was palm trees and food for them all, yeah. and candy. Were they chows? Yeah, that's it. I think yeah, 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 because yeah. you did that in Sonic Adventure 2. That's it. And then when you take the memory card out of the Dreamcast, you, you, could, you could keep them safe. Like yeah, you, you could to, like, feed them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like Tamagotchis, yeah. So that was the successor to the Sega Saturn, which is another console that I always thought looked great, because I only had... I barely had... A, I don't think I even had a Mega Drive for years, but I always wanted one. But then you'd go to like certain people, always the more privileged sure. friends, or the... Uh, you might go to a Wait, youth club mean... and they had a Sega Saturn. When did the Sega Genesis come into it? So Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, as I I refer to it. Is that the same thing? Is no, it's, Mega it's, Drive. It's Mega Drive had a cartridge, and then they did the Mega Drive Two, which I'm not ever really sure what the point of that was. It was just a bit more efficient, I think. And then they did Sega Saturn, which had a CD. Dallas. But they also did the I... Sega CD, which I don't know what that was. I don't remember the Saturn at all. Have you not heard of this? You know a Sega Saturn. I've, I've, I've heard of it, but no, because I, I was born in 1989. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sega Saturn was 1994. Mega yeah. Drive is like... So I'd have been five. Peak of, like, just at the turn of the 90s, I think, you had the Mega Drive. And at, you know, at the age of seven, I was playing out a lot, Craig. So, oh, yeah, so I was didn't, didn't out. out. The, yeah. sun, the sun was shining. The sun was shining. <laughs> Craig, bed at six. Because, <laughs> so. I mean... Your Draw those curtains. <laughs> your, yeah. your story of getting Titanic reminds me of the time your family... Well, that was 1997, so that, that was N64 time. That reminds so. me of the f- time your family bought your bike, because they thought you might need it more than whatever toy you really still wanted. <laughs> toys. So they took me to Toys R Us for my birthday, gave oh, you £110. <laughs> I was really into Beast Wars. What I thought it was Beast awesome. Wars? What is Beast Wars? <laughs> wait, wait, no, we'll, we'll leave that. Keep going. Anyway, so I bought all, and it was like it was literally like because I lived in a village, so we went to Toys R Us and I picked I like, all all the Beast Wars toys I wanted. I had, so like, many sets. toys under one. Got roof. to the checkout, went to pick up the PC game, which I don't think will be winning any top game ever. And my dad went, "No, we don't want you to get all this. You're gonna get a bike. Great. Can I get one Beast Wars toy? No. I saw. Sort of <laughs> so I, I, I agree I, with I, him. <laughs> I mean, he was right. Yeah. But at mm. least tell me when. Uh, just get me the bike. Don't take me to Toys R yeah. Us and make me put them all back. It's like, it's, it's could like, you ride a bike at this point? <laughs> Barely. It's like it's like you were a starving homeless man. They took you to like a supermarket, and you picked out all these cakes and things. Like, actually, no, we're going to give you this like really healthy salad. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to give this healthy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Healthy salad. Oh, and all I wanted, and I never got it, was so my favourite Beast Wars character, Dinobot. Dinobot. I, I never. And got I Dinobot. think I think it was really hard to find, and I got him, and no, put him back, and never got my Dinobot. I never got one either. He was he was my favourite too. Yeah, he was he was my favourite. Um, so going through then another Metal Gear Solid entry. This is Snake Eater. That's, yeah. that's... So this is my bet. One of my best friend's favorite games, and he says like it's heartbreaking. That's my favorite game ever. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Snake Eater. Is yeah. that the one with the whole sort of James Bond sort of rip off at the beginning? Yes. Love letter Snake, to James Bond. Snake Eater. That song's yeah, yeah. incredible. Yeah. And it is Snake Eater. It's just it just works so well because it like it's set in the sixties, so all the is he young then, Snake, or young No, 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 uh, you're playing as Big Boss, before oh. before he became Big Boss. Mm. Uh, but his codename is still Snake, and he looks like Snake, because Solid Snake is a clone of Big Boss. Mm. The series is mental, it's a whole, Just, it, yeah, it's a whole thing. Just, yeah, that, but yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, it's all stripped back, and it's the very, very beginning, so you, don't, you didn't have to have played any of the other games to understand it. It helped, but it was fine. You're sneaking through the jungle. You can wear a crocodile mask and hide in a river. When you say crocodile mask, do you mean you could kill a crocodile and take his head off? No, you could kill crocodiles. You could kill crocodiles by... They would sit there. When they open their mouth, you could throw a grenade in. Huh. Uh, and then you could get their meat because you needed to hunt for food. Yeah, you had to eat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my ghost is so good. Is that the one where you could build up... Hmm. Okay. So, that's the one where you could build up an immunity to snakes by eating them. Yeah. Or snake poison. It wasn't poison, it was how much Snake liked the food. Because Snake is quite discerning. So you could have food that he didn't like, and the more you ate of it, the more he would like it. And it was great because you get little voice clips when he would eat food to let you know how he, how he liked it. So, so you'd find a delicious fruit, and he'd go, This is great! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, bread and water yeah. again. And sometimes when you ate certain foods, you would play a little video of snake eating the food. So it would wow, just, like it, a little cutaway scene. Yeah, so it became like gnawing on a fish. That sounds really boring. It's so good. So there was some spy work to be done in the game. Yeah, because you would have to infiltrate bases and you could do things like there'd be stockpiles of food and equipment and you could blow them up to TNT. Right. And so that meant in the area, um, enemies would be less equipped. And they would starve. Yeah, cause, and they'd be like weak and they'd go, oh, my stomach, can you hear the stomach's rumbling? So that, that was another thing. If you didn't eat much, you need a low thing, snake's stomach would rumble and guards could hear it. That's cool. So you'd be like sneaking through the, sneaking through the undergrowth and it just goes... <laughs> so is it like, like, what was that? But is it, it's not sandbox open world though, is it? Not quite. Not like it would be if you were playing, um, what's it called? Far, not Far Cry. Is it called yeah, Far, Far Cry? Cry? When you're in the jungles and yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like that, but... It was a little bit, it had elements of that. There were little areas, but you could do stuff. There's, like, there's things like, very early on in the game, you go past the base and there's a helicopter park there. If you, if you, and then later on in the game, there's an area where you're in the mountains, and if you get found out by guards, helicopters attack you. Mm. But very early on in the game, if you blow up that helicopter, that doesn't happen. <laughs> there's loads of cool little touches like that. But there's still missions in between, I don't quite understand. Uh, it's not missions, the whole thing is one mission. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, the whole thing is Operation Snake Eater. That makes more sense. Yeah. Did um, either of you have a handheld when you were... Uh... Game Boy. Naturally, you... Game well, Boy. I suppose it would just be Game Boy then, wouldn't it? Yeah, I never, I yeah. never had a PSP or anything. My friend had a PSP, and he was rubbish at Tony Hawk's. <laughs> so I used to play Tony Hawk's on his PSP. And he would watch? Uh, no, because <laughs> it would mostly be on the bus back from school. Oh. And what happened was the local council got afraid that the buses were too big and were crashing into things. So they made them, rather than go the quick way underneath the train track, which had like a height restriction on, that they could still fit under, they'd make you go all the way up the main road and all the way back. So a 15 minute journey became a 45 minute journey. Uh So I used to have a lot of time to play PSP. (laughs) And it was just Tony Hawk's. I can't remember which one. It might have been... It was one of the ones where you could get off the board. It might have been underground, I'm not sure. And do what? Go on oh, that was missions. underground, wasn't it? You no, go... you could get off the board and climb up a fire escape, so then you could jump off the top of a building, essentially. So, on the subject of Game Boys then, so where are we at with uh, Pokemon then? Because at 192, it's Gold and Silver, which to me were the best Pokemon game. R- red and Blue. Uh, yeah, see, gold and Silver every time. I don't know. See, I've we've compiled our own lists of you know top five video games just to finish the episode when that eventually comes. So a sweet, sweet relief to everyone listening. I'll be in like part seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And mine has Pokemon in it because... Yeah, mine has Pokemon in it. It's super, super enjoyable. And I think, to be honest, Red and... I like the day and night in Silver and Gold, but the fact that I knew who everyone was in Red and Blue tips it for me. There's only yeah, did you watch the cartoon first and then went and played the game? I must have. Yeah, because I was like, wow, it's Misty. It's Brock, and I'll never speak to them again. I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to remember how I got into it. I remember one day... I think, I think it was with the game. No, somebody brought in, it was right before they put it on TV, Some my friends brought in a uh, like magazine with all yeah. the Pokemon in. And I was I, like, oh, cool, what's that? I like that one. So the two I liked right off the bat was Psyduck and Charmander. Um, I, I remember the exact same thing happened in my school. Someone brought in like a magazine with... All the Pokemon in it, and I remember straight away thinking, "Oh, that Pikachu one's cool." So I can see why he's yeah. the mascot. Yeah, I mean, I was, yeah, I mean, those games are just. I see. I, I... There are a certain time in my life where it was just magic. Like there were a couple of us again, the same ones that did yeah. our own fantasy book. Yeah, you had Pokemon. We'd spend days like building your team up, and then eventually put them on Stadium. Um, yeah. And the cool thing with Stadium was you could unlock a mode where you could play the Game Boy through the TV, but you could speed it up. Yes, like yes. Time so you three. could walk faster, yeah. yeah. So you could do like the Elite Four and level up all your team, like Sissy. Unless you did Rare Candy, which was shit, because you used the Missing No Cheat. But they were weaker if you used Rare Candy. And didn't that just break your game? No, no, no it broke it, it was weird. Um, it was good to. No, no, I, mean, I did it, but you get weird stuff like you do that Missing No thing and you could catch like a level 200. Nido King. Yeah, but it would always it level sucks, out yeah. at level like one. Yeah. So you could, it was just, but you could clone certain items. Yeah. So I, I remember my brother did it so he could, um, he had infinite rare candies. Yeah, but that's cheap. That's how the thing is with rare yeah. candy is like it made your Pokemon weaker. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, 
I didn't find out about that cheat until I'd used every rare candy in the game. <laughs> so I so I sport I got infinite nuggets and moonstones. Defense ups, yeah. <laughs> which were lim- which there were. Uh, do you remember there was a limited number of moonstones? Yeah, you could buy them. No, you chill. could have not to gold you, and silver. Yeah, you, yeah, buy yeah, the you, said, you said find them and, nu- and nuggets. So I had loads of money. I don't remember why I started liking Pokemon, but I remember my dad buying me and my brother a Game Boy each and one copy of red and one copy of blue and being like, you get to pick which colour you want. Which one did you get blue? I think my brother picked blue, so I ended up with red. And I'm pretty confident my dad bought us those just to keep us quiet. Yeah. <laughs> which, but then I like flash cut to me getting ready to go on holiday and my mum being like, don't just sit and play that Game Boy all the and time. You just sat yeah, and me just Game sitting Boy. and playing yeah. the Game Boy for seven days non-stop. Do you remember how much that revolutionised like car journeys? Yeah. No, because I'd always feel sick playing anything in the car. Really? Yeah, I used yeah, to have, before sickness. that, I had like a knockoff one that wasn't a Game Boy, but it was a console that took batteries and it had preloaded games on. And it was like the equivalent of Frogger and Tetris yeah. and Asteroid. Anything well, you could get on a 2D yeah. where you just sort of move back and forth. I was going to mention this, I forgot, I don't know how it works. At one point, my dad, for work, went to China and he used to bring back like knockoff DVDs and stuff, which is great. At one point, he brought back this Game Boy. Well, it's not great for the studios, Mark. No. We don't condone that. So did you ever... Sorry, just... Hang on, look, wait. Game Boy cartridge. When you put it in Game Boy, and it was all in Japanese, you had to try and figure it out. Chinese. No, it was in Japanese. Right. (laughs) Uh, I don't know why. And you load it up. It It had Pokemon red, blue, green, yellow, every Super Mario game, and all this stuff on the one cartridge. And but I did, have, it, did I have, it save? Yes. Right. <laughs> I have no idea how that worked. Did you ever get a Game Shark? So that was the only way you could get Mew. Or yeah. if you had Golden Silver, you'd get Celebi. Oh, my. Like, no, see, I never, I never did that where you go to the little conferences or whatever. No, no, you didn't. So Game Shark was a thing you could buy. I don't know if it was legit or not. I presume it was. And you put in codes into the Game Shark and then you could plug in your game and you could get certain power-ups. Or So in this, you could get Mew to just appear in place of a yeah. normal Pokemon. I had one for the PlayStation. I can't remember what it so was called. That was what I was going to ask. Did you get yours chipped? Was it called chipped? Yes, our play- no. uh, my PlayStation. So you could play chipped. copied games. Yeah. yeah. I know someone who was an adult that had a PlayStation and was like, "Yeah, I've had my chip to play copied games." And we're like, "Oh wow, that's so cool! You can get all these cheap games." But I never got mine done. I've no idea. <laughs> I know. I've no idea if it actually properly worked. What is, it did work. I know that everybody chipping? had it. Done. So I think it was a way of also playing import games. I think yeah, it just gets yeah. rid of the region restrictions, yeah. surely. Yeah, that was a big. I think you could play certain games. Yeah, because yeah. my copy of Phantom Menace and PS One was knockoff. But also, PlayStation doesn't have particularly sophisticated software now. No. Like at the time, sure. Well, <laughs> um, that's that. That's the weird thing. You know how like the PS Three it had didn't have PS Two back compatibility, but it had PS One. Yeah. So why that is? No. It's because there was there was a PS One inside the PS Three. Right, just just the just, just the stuff for yeah, it. Yeah. Just it, just the same console essentially, but like smaller and well, just in the PS. They are releasing a PlayStation One in time for this year's Christmas. Hello. For the cheap price of one hundred pounds, you can get a mini PlayStation One, the size of I don't know, like a the size of an iPhone. Yeah. That you plug in. You have to supply your own power cable, and you plug it in HDMI to your telly, and it plays mm. PlayStation One. Yeah. Well, that's essentially what I've got for the. But, um, I've got a NES version. Yeah, bought me so, but that's yeah. that's why they've done it because of how well, successful they still... that was. That's good time to cut. So looking at the top one hundred, then I'm just going through. There's so many games that I haven't even heard of. I mean, there's five hundred in the list. Oh yeah. So I suppose GTA's got to come up at some point, and they got four at ninety five. Like I've never been a huge GTA fan. They've I've... got the other ones in the list as well, which yeah. I find they must better be... than four. Yeah, a lot more. I always Four's found good, that I never but... cared about the story. I just wanted to mess about. No, see, I don't like San Andreas, and you love San Andreas. San Andreas but... is the one that's probably highest on this list. To fact... me, Vice City or Three are the best ones because it's that Vice City's better than Three easily. Is Vice City sort of, just a free... homage to Scarface? A yes. lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, but Three <laughs> has that. That was the first one to do it. So that's the first one I played yeah. doing that. And if you played it on the Xbox, you could put your own music into it. I'm pretty sure you could. I do remember that. Yeah. So, you know, after you've listened to all of them and you know every single interview that comes up on Chatterbox, <laughs> you know. What was the one that had Ricky Gervais in? Was that four? four. Yeah, that and I think you had 
You could Dave get... Chappelle? No, maybe? it was Cat, Cat Williams. Okay, that might sound mildly racist. But, uh... <laughs> well, it didn't until you said that, I think. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't even know Ricky Gervais was in it. Yeah. Yeah, um, you go and watch his set. Yeah, there's like, there's like it's a... really weird because yeah. it's quite stilted. There's like, a theatre in Times Square and you could go and watch him perform and it was like mo capped that's weird. It's so weird. Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> was... What was what was the point of that for them or for Ricky? Well, I think it was just world building. Yeah, like, just, there was just, just so much city. stuff, and it was cool. It was really like, but I just to me, I don't like know. how on five you can watch the telly. You mean yeah, like the same sort of thing. Yeah, you, you can watch the telly in uh, four as well. But in five, you can go to the cinema and stuff. I mean, it's kind of insulting to people, but you'd have to be a real fucking loser. To, <laughs> to in a game go and watch the telly. Well, I mean, if you're going to talk about being a loser, there is a strip club. <laughs> And if you're going to the strip club in your video game... You remember in um, Vice City when you had the strip club and you had to spend a certain amount of your own money there in one go yes. to, so that it then started generating money for you? Yeah. While I had that on, mum walked in and was like, what are you up to? I was like, just playing this game. She mm. was like, really? I was like, yeah, you've got to do but, this. But that's life. You'll be watching a movie and there'll be a five-second sex scene in it. Parents come in, what are you watching? What are you watching? The Room. I thought you just saw a sex scene in The Room. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just think with San Andreas, is that when you could have a girlfriend and if the date went well, you could go and get laid? Yeah. But you just see the outside of the house you and could, come out in the morning. You could have several girlfriends and, and if you got them all to like maximum... Was there one that was like, crazy? Yes. You get them all to maximum light and you all got benefits. Like there was one who was a paramedic, one who was a cop, and one was... Right, okay. And it, like, you had to go out with them to do stuff like, if you get arrested, when you come out, you get to keep all your guns. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of racing games, that's one we've passed over. I mean, obviously, me, Nintendo, all the way, Mario Kart 64, it's just like... That's not what I thought you were going to say when you talk about racing games. Well, no, only because that's the only thing I relate to, because I never <laughs> played, like, Colin... Like, the no, one I remember seen... is uh, V Rally for the PlayStation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not Colin a fan McRae. of racing games, but Mario Kart isn't really a racing game. No. Do you know what I mean? It's like an arcade game where yeah, you I race. Suppose, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, but it's instantly playable. Yeah, like, it's, it's great. It, you yeah. can jump straight in. Like, I thought you were going to talk about, like, Gran Turismo. Well, that was the thing. So you've got Forza and Gran Turismo are, like, the ones that are still... I would assume that are still relevant and still mm. have that kind of following where it's a big deal when a new one comes out. Yeah. Yeah, and the need for speeds at a certain point as well and all that sort of stuff. There was but... one that I always quite like where it was like drift. I think there was a need for speed drift, which was kind of cool. I remember that. That was good. Yeah. Well, if you ain't out of control, you ain't in control. <laughs> yeah. I think it's how. <laughs> as my boy Paul would say, <laughs> RIP, miss you every day. As my boy um, ha- Han. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the Burnout. Are they still making Burnout games? Hmm? Burnout? Are they is they made still one good? not... Th- I mean, within the last five years, there was I a Burnout game. I they did. I, th- I thought the last one was Burnout Paradise. Yeah, when was that? Like ten years ago. You reckon? I reckon... Yeah. F- well, it's been forever. Did you... Any of you Final Fantasy players? Like I said, I played the first bit, found it too hard and quit. But I was, was that like, of seven? I was or... seven years old. So, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, I like, mean... the one that I will always see in, like, certain people's, like, you, certain people have their ones that are their go-to favourite games, like, if you've got Legend of Zelda, it's Ocarina. With Final Fantasy, it tends to be seven. Yeah, it does. As seven's everyone's favourite, because I don't know why, it's just the epitome of everything that Final Fantasy is, mixed with the gameplay. Yeah. Mixed with the time it came out as well on the PlayStation. And it, like, it, it appeals to that same sort of... Um anime autistic crowd yeah but also I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was over two discs as well on the Playstation it may have been as much which is as quite four it may have been four yeah, discs which is a really novel experience really yeah. at the time isn't it That's See, what I, I remember that with uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 there was a point you had to change the disc I've got a Final Fantasy in my top 5 list really it's, it's not 7 yeah huh I think we my friend Matt got a game uh, the X-Files game which was in that sort of you know that weird mould of having cuts to like real Acting, yeah. What was, um, there, was a, there was a name for that? It was like full motion video. Yeah, was it sort of? Terrible. Were they sort of like the um, the Telltale series? Mm, mm, a bit, but I think obviously Telltale series is mo- a lot more revered and successful. Yeah. Uh, oh, now sure, no, yeah. but even commercially and creatively, it's more revered than those weird, like I said, Titanic Adventure out of time. <laughs> X Files was fantastic. Uh, you know, like uh, Psychic Detective yeah, stuff like that. Just, not, they're not just like Telltale games aren't just an awful cash in. Mm. They're cash ins, but they're not awful. Um, scrolling through this, the Call of Duty games again. I, I mean, I could never get into them. I think the main appeal was online. Yeah, and I think you can get to a certain level where you're competent and you're even good, and then you go online and there's people that play it religiously and yeah, it just non-stop. loses its yeah. fun. I mean, it's, it's, modern, it's Call of Duty Four, isn't it? Uh, so that's eighty eight. Yeah, Call of Duty. I 4. got kind of good at that. But the thing is now. 
I wouldn't stand a chance. So I had Modern Warfare 2 was the one we all got into. I said we, like me and my group of friends, I, and that was at 2009. No, see, the one I liked was was the World War 2 one. Because well, that's World, Medal of Honor, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. A World at War. Yeah, that was it. Because you played in the World of War. The storyline you could only play through once or twice. The world was at war. But then it's funny though. That was the first one with the zombies on. Yes, it was. And that was what made it really, really popular. Because <laughs> most people enjoyed playing that more than they enjoyed playing yeah. that Yeah, game. so I borrowed a Call of Duty one. And literally the only thing we played, we being me and my housemate, was the zombie game. Yeah, over and over and over. Which is now fleshed out as it's basically its own sort of game yeah. within yeah. the game. Um, so now you get like a... a Story mode where they usually use a motion capture of a famous person like Kevin Spacey. It's like Jeff Goldblum. I think. Yeah, yeah, so the one the we had, a Goldblum, it had Ron Perlman. Cool. And it had Heather Graham. Nice. And it had the guy, <laughs> I, I will never remember his name, What's but he appears Graham? in loads. He's, you know, in Captain America, he's got his like little gang in the first one. And it's yeah. got oh, the I American guy, yeah, yeah. but he's got the mustache. Yeah, yeah I know yeah, you mean. So I can't remember his name. Uh, no, I, you won't. I um, don't he know was in the awful Street Fighter movie. He played Bison. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's the same guy. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going for this. So, Harvest Moon stuff, League of Legends, never played. So. League of Legends is one I of love it. It's made sure like Alan Partridge where he's going through the veg, going, yeah, oh, skip <laughs> nah, past them. Don't, don't like that. Don't yeah. like that. <laughs> Pong. I never um, played the Super Mario Galaxies, but I obviously really played fun. Super yeah, Mario really 64. And Super like, good. See, Mario 64, amazing. I'm, I've got the what if the one is on the Switch, Mario... Odyssey, Odyssey yeah. and it's so good. It's so charming. It's but I think so it is weird. playable. Like the two iconic kind of uh, mascots for games when I was growing up was Mario and Sonic, and I actually was a Sonic person who had a Mega Drive. <laughs> and I always remember thinking Sonic was really cool because he was 2D, and if you didn't do anything, he'd tap his foot and you think, look how cool that is. And yeah. then they seem to have gone too far that way in, as Sonic's developed it's, into it's, an annoying little shit. Sonic doesn't <laughs> jump, right? That's the, he jumps. No, he sort of jumps. He, he it's jumps. not like Mario. Of course he jumps. No, no, yeah. Sonic is very linear. Right, Sonic goes from A to B in a straight line. Well, and you if, can if explore, that straight line yeah, includes yeah. jumps or loop the loops, fair mm. enough. Yeah. But Mario goes up and down. He goes down pipes and he goes up pipes. Mm. So when you put Sonic in a 3D world, essentially you're just running along the ground. I was thinking about and this. And it's a bit disappointing. I was thinking about this a while ago about why Sonic couldn't make the jump. And I think it's because like Mario is about precision. And it's about like platforming and, and kind of exploration. Yeah, and Sonic's just where, kind of... Where Sonic is, go fast. Yeah, well, it's A to Sonic B, Lydia. Is, and when they've done these, uh, the Sonic game That's why I've Sonic got, Adventure which was is, the one of the best games ever. It's not. When they've yes. got the latest <laughs> Sonic game, which was, I can't remember what it's called, but it's one I've downloaded recently, which is like a homage to the original series, is they've oh, run yeah. into that problem where you can't be too predictable in your level design, which... Back in the days of the Mega Drive, you caught of could because you had the innovation of how fast you could go. Well, yeah. also you and just changed the jumps. background on the Mega Drive and it looked different. <laughs> like, well, yeah, here he is on an island. Here he is underground. But the, here he is the, volcano. The thing is with Sonic is the whole thing was the speed, but then as games develop, it needs to be more than that. And I think you couldn't combine how. Yeah. Maybe I, you know, that linear gameplay you can't continue now with. I remember hearing. Apparently, a massive chunk of the memory on the cartridge for that game was just for the Sega intro. Do you remember the voice that would go, Sega? Yes, my childhood. It was like 40% of the cartridge or something was just that audio. Yeah, because he'd zoom past. <laughs> but it's great. I mean, like, I mean, so it is probably the game responsible. It's the first game I ever played, computer game, as I called them back then. And, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive. And you had, like, the whole family gathered around to go, like, look at it. Did you, know? Yeah. That sounds ridiculous. It is mental. Like, brought it round. Like, uh, my aunt's boyfriend brought the Mega Drive round and they were all downstairs. I had to go to bed. That's but, right. like, I oh, mean, like, they were playing Go upstairs it. and play with your bike. Yeah, uh, yeah I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, go go tight spokes. Go upstairs and play with your rocking horse. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, I did have. Um, but, yeah, no, the, the Mega Drive was incredible. And it was, I think they had that and they had a golf game. But even that was, like, the novelty of just seeing a video game. Like, yeah, yeah, used to be a big thing. I know, you know, it's weird saying it, like, you grow up just as video games became, like, a thing. So anything was exciting. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier, weren't we, about how, like, you would see a game with the graphics. Like, the graphics, like, Metal Gear Solid 1, you're like, it looks like real life. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah. So it's such that we and my Adam, my housemate, always joke, we talk about, like, our dads, when they see video games, go, oh, it's just like real life. It's like, no, it's not. They look back, like, just, even no. the video, even the vid intro movie to, like, Tekken, my dad yeah. just mind blown. My, <laughs> no, my dad's favourite thing in that vein is, you know those little mini helicopters you can get that fly inside? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He likes to buy those for us each Christmas. Because to him, the concept of a helicopter that flies inside is amazing. Yeah. And to me, it's tat. 
Like, yeah, because they cost, they cost a tenner. Yeah, and I yeah. feel slightly bad. And no but... one can really fly them properly. They always end up well, smashed. Well, no, because they're not real helicopters. Yeah, it's like... really hard. But yeah, essentially, like, to him, that's the world's most amazing thing. My housemate. Like, seeing those graphics. Adam, he... Uh... Oh, I just might as well say Adam, you know him. Adam went well, he'll, be, phase he'll of... be the only one listening. So. He, yeah, he bought uh, helicopters, and it's just like you spent how much? And like, it was about eighty quid. I was like, okay, we took it out on the downs, and it, it, it didn't smashed he, in didn't seconds. Didn't he fly it into a tree? Yeah, it, it didn't yeah, no, no, no. Did you buy him that one for Christmas? Because no. I had to climb the tree to get it down. No, I think Sam bought it. Was it Sam that yeah. bought it? Yeah. We had to climb the tree outside your house to retrieve it. What, because... when I did... So did you play Resident Evil 4? Sorry, Tom. Sorry, yeah, I had it on the Wii. It was super enjoyable. Um, the good thing about it was, at the start, <clears throat> you are essentially just killing villagers. So you've sort of swapped roles. Well, they where... turn on you because you're there, yeah. you're Leon Kennedy. And it's the, the cutscenes... Are Leon fa- S. Kennedy. Yeah, <laughs> the, the cutscenes are fantastic. I think that's part of the charm of that game is how over-the-top Hollywood yeah. it is. Yeah. But you're, I mean, you start... And I think it's made by a Japanese... Yes. Team, so it's it's a weird almost Capcom Capcom, Capcom yeah, yeah. So, they, just... so, so what were the ones that went I know was it Activision went out and it didn't Acclaim disappear I think Acclaim might There's still be so around like Midway Games do you remember them are they still around no, no. <laughs> THQ IDOS Psygnosis THQ it's that like... would be good THQ like that what I... was the one that said it's in the oh, that's EA that's yeah. EA Sports yeah. it's in the sports. game yeah. the... I, I remember when they used to start and they used to say Electronic Arts <laughs> Yeah, so I, EA I, I think, EA, yeah, I I think yeah. EA did a game I had on the uh, it was actually on the list, Populous, mm. which all I remember doing was PC raising and flattening land. I had it on Mega Drive, oh, okay. but it was a giant cartridge, like big, thick, yellow cartridge for Populous. <laughs> um, propping through the list now, Persona Four, Zork, fucking hell, nineteen seventy seven. Zork, what the hell is Zork? Uh, interactive fiction games. Oh, a text it? parser. Right, so, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's one of those ones, yeah, yeah, you know, where you... Yeah. Yeah, choose your own adventure. See, I've already passed Ocarina of Time, but we're in 30. Is that Spelunky? Um, that really sounds familiar, but I can't believe it. The is. Elder Scrolls Free. God, how I... The only ones that's I know Morrowind. are Oblivion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Morrowind. Yeah. So that's before there's, there's again. There's Daggerfall, I think it's another one. Journey. What was Journey? I it, know. it was a PS3 game. Um, where you sort of explore the desert to fly around. See, NBA Jam, good, but not that good. Yeah. Uh, like, we went past, um, there's FIFA 12. We yeah, went, so football games. We I, went past Madden not as well. my Not my cup of tea, tea. <laughs> games, but I remember my friends playing Pro Evo. But they this, didn't use yeah. real teams, did they? No, so Pro Evo, FIFA have the licenses, because EA Sports have the license with FIFA. But in Pro Evo, you don't. So instead of Liverpool, you'd get Merseyside Red. And yeah. instead of Everton, you'd get Merseyside Blue. Like Manchester Red, and, Manchester Blue. But weirdly, it? at one point, FIFA only had all the licenses to everyone, apart from the Dutch FA, who decided yeah. they were going to stick their end in with Pro Evo. So on Pro Evo, you could be the Netherlands, or you could be Holland. And on, on, and on FIFA, back in like 2012, so pretty recently, really... You could be, I think it was called the Netherlands. Yeah, and it was just the flag, and, it wasn't the FA. And it was just, yeah, it was like an orange flag, and the team made up of sort of slightly racist Netherland names. Yeah. So if it was England, it'd be like Smith, Johnson, Bray. I don't know about yeah, Bray. Yeah, all that. Kind so of... it was just like, <laughs> De Hoyvelt. <Yep. laughs> um, Va- Van der Ho. Like, yeah. Schneider. <laughs> My favourite football club always, and I think of the time, was Michael Owen's football Game for what the was that? I don't I, know. I remember, it might have been called Super It got Striker. a sweet 84% in my magazine though. I remember Sven Joran Eriksson had his own game at one point. And I think David Beckham did as well. I'm sure Beckham's got a load yeah. of titles. I mean, yeah. I don't know if they put individuals, but I think, didn't they have a picture of that famous referee on one of the games? Yeah, Pierre Colligia. Or Pierre, Colina. Pierre, Pierre Luigi Colina. Yeah, he was, on, he was on one of the PES games because. Well, Pro Evo, right? Yeah, while yeah. the FIFA games would have whoever's the best player of that, it was that year. Uh, Ronaldinho. Yeah, for or, years. Yeah, Ronaldinho, yeah. Ronaldo. For Wait, some reason, Ru- it was Rooney. Jordan Henderson for a bit. Rooney a lot. Rooney for a bit, because I think that was just for I England. I think Jack though. Wilshere was on one. No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm sure... No, no, I'm pretty I, sure I, I swear there was one where it was, it was like Wayne Rooney, Jack Wilshere, and maybe an American player. <laughs> Wayne Rooney at the front, Jack Wilshere in the middle, Messi right at the it back. Jenny might be like, <laughs> Land, like Landon Donovan or something. Uh, <laughs> right, stop a sec and unplug it. 
So I'm going to run out, run through the top ten now as fast as possible, and then we'll do ours, and then we'll finish this. Well, I, up. I mean, to be honest, I'd rather discuss some of the things on the top ten. Well, I'm going to discuss top ten. But... So top ten, Super Metroid is ten, which I my first introduction to Metroid, and I feel like I missed out because there's a ton of these games. No, actually, it was Samus and Smash Brothers. So, Met- and then I think that gave a bit more momentum to when they eventually put Prime out, which was a lot darker and a lot more kind of. Um, where it's just you walking walking around the planet and scanning it was, it was and shooting. Always that, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but I remember because Smash Brothers is so cartoony. I always expected Samus to be like a more cartoony kind of like <laughs> shoot 'em up, and it's actually quite, I won't say dark, but it's quite yeah. um, atmospheric. Uh, nine Street Fighter Two. So I had the Street Fighter Two. Um, it was sort of like the Turbo Edition, and yes, the I Mega Drive I had had there was a console, so you had A, B, and C. But you also had X, Y, Z specifically mm. for this game. For some reason, I lost the instruction manual, and we couldn't work for out some any. Reason. Of, we couldn't work out any of the special moves. So me and my aunt went to Forbidden Planet with a notepad and wrote down what people's special moves were. Wow! Yeah, God, what a time! For, well, it wasn't Forbidden Planet. It was called Pink Planet. So he had. Was it? Was it? No. What are they called? The two games. So there's still the one now that exists that I can't remember because I oh. know MT. Yeah. Games, what? Sorry, Game Shop. Yeah. Game, there was, so Game and Game Station. Game, game Station. Station, but there was, and then there was in Western, one. opposite that was Pink Planet, which also did. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm going to have to Google it in a second. So, what was Pink Planet? Was was that a reference to something? I don't know, but it was the same exact same store where you do trade ins and stuff. Uh, number eight, Minecraft. Yeah, um, great game. Super, well, I, I just never super, got it. Super it. enjoyable. Uh, you can play it online with your friends, you can play it at home. It's very relaxing. Where can I buy Minecraft, Tom? As you well, are <laughs> I'm glad you asked. You can get it from any of your favourite online stores, Craig. See, World of Warcraft at 7, but I always have a thing at Warcraft because of that. It seemed to do stuff, especially to friends of mine, where it made them recluses for at least a year. Uh, World of Warcraft, <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. No, I, I, I like MMORPGs, massive multiplayer online role-playing games. Thank for, you. For well everyone's mum out there who's listening. Um, but... I never got into Warcraft because I was playing something that was different before then. But it is enjoyable. It's sort of, you know, it is enjoyable, but it's something you'd have to dedicate a lot of time to. If you picked it up and played it for an hour a night, that wouldn't really well, it's be like enough. like any game nowadays, though. It's very hard to pick no, up a game and play a lot it of for... things. A lot of things you could pick up for an hour and it's fine. But stuff like Warcraft, you'd have to pick up for an hour with four or five other people that would also pick it up at the same time to do the same amount of stuff with you. Mm. I, the thing is, I remember I, I never played World of Warcraft because I just knew if I did, I would get lost in it and become yeah. one of those people. You it's always get, that thing. I specifically bought a game, yeah. which I'll discuss later, because I knew it would encompass a lot of time. And my, uh, my whole thing for buying it was, I'll get so engrossed in it, I'll save money by not going out as much. That's a really weird mentality. Yeah. So, well, so. I don't play, you as you know, I'm a very a busy man, so I yes, don't have time man. to sit down and play video well, games. Well, like you do to. a lot for charity, don't you? That's do the thing. charity rounds. Did yeah. uh, 200 pounds. I've got, <laughs> got my fingers in many pies. Um, so I'll go out there now. So we're, playing, like this. we're going through, so we've uh, six. Miss Pac-Man, which is odd, because I thought sure, they'd go... I mean, I don't know how they're judging this list, because it's like you think they've picked the best of the franchise, because surely Pac-Man... I think they went Miss Pac-Man. Pac-Man, because the idea is Pac-Man was groundbreaking, but Miss Pac-Man was a woman. And so I, th- I think I, that's their point. I think Miss Pac-Man was actually bigger. Like, Pac-Man started, and Miss Pac-Man was the one that was like... They capitalised that. I've played Pac-Man appeal. since, and it's like, oh, it's kind of fun, or, then it gets boring very could you quickly. Get, could you get Miss Pac-Man at home? Because... Pac-Man yeah, to me, they released it on Mega Pac- Drive eventually. Pac-Man to me is you have to play it at an arcade. Yeah, that's how so I do you think like Pac- Miss Pac-Man was at the crest of or the start of that sort of home entertainment? Pong, surely. Pong was yeah, Pong, and then Miss Pac-Man yeah. and Tetris all on the same Atari 1979 or yeah, whatever, whatever it was. Pokemon Red and Blue at five. I mean, what can you say really? I mean, that's in my top five easily. I, oh, it's in my top five. But then you could say red and blue, but then I'd say to me yellow. See, it was never like the hype. It was the because... same game, but it made it more accessible. No, because it gave you all the Pokemon. There was no. No, though it didn't. It was certain that it didn't. There was have. no struggle. Could don't think you get a Volpix in you. Know? Yeah, but it gave you the free starters and Pikachu, the the four best Pokemon in the game. Well, it and saw... don't give me any of that Taurus bullshit. 
Taurus is on my. We, we cannot get into Taurus. I gave you a whole podcast Pokemon. on my my <laughs> team, my team, Pokemon team, Dream Team. Yeah. Take out Mewtwo. That's a, that's your TED talk, isn't it? Yeah. Pokemon, yeah. A, a Taurus, a Pokemon wronged. Taurus, great Pokemon having <laughs> no, the team. No, right, no, fine, no, no, whatever. No. But don't dis- besmirch Taurus. Doom. I, I just the few sure. years with Doom. Yeah, yeah, but it's top five. No, Do you know what I not... mean? Like I don't. I it's, again, it's... this list is weird because then they've got at number that's, three. That's a legacy list. Yeah, that yeah. Doom so is in the, there because of the legacy. And then you creates. do Legend of Zelda one, which one, yeah. is yeah. like not even. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like Doom basically invented first person. But then they've yeah. got they haven't got so... Super Mario on this. If they've got inst- Su- two Super, Super Mario Mario's. three, that's the best one on these. But Super that's the Nintendo. thing. It, at three for Doom, at uh, four for Doom, and three for Legend of Zelda, they're not even the best of that. Franchise, no. no. But they're, they're, they're well, I don't know. Star- Doom might be. I don't really. No, no, no. It's not. They're the starters of that franchise, is the thing. Yeah. Mm. Which is annoying, but like the latest, fine. latest Doom game is brilliant. And then their their number one kind of just annoys me. Well, it's Tetris, isn't it? But it's. <sighs> but I can. I just. You, you can see why. Yeah. Yes, but then, you can see why it's the most influential game. But you yeah. can't see why it's the best game yeah like the, well you know best greatest is, mm. is, what, what is this list greatest ever well, it's just 500 greatest games but I mean it uh, doesn't have any real established criteria so Grand Theft Auto 3 if you're judging on legacy is probably the one you would put as the top started all those sandbox games so not only is it Grand Theft Auto series starter but it's everything like Watch Dogs and all that sort of stuff that was the last sandbox yeah, those thing. Yeah, open city yeah. sandbox games, yeah. Like, it's that. It's spawned all of those things. <clears> it's, it's in there. It's a really good game. I really enjoy it. And the fact that you could cheat on it as well added a different... <laughs> like, it added a different dimension because you can't cheat on games anymore. No, it's all, like, DLC and stuff, all the fun stuff. Yeah, but you say yeah. that they've put Legend of Zelda Link to the Past at 20, which admittedly I've not played, but then they've got Ocarina of Time way up at 36, which usually is in your top three. That's, any that's always what people talk about. Yeah, which is weird. And then, what was the other one? They got Half Life Two, Fourteen. Like that's one of my favourites. But it soured for me because they never finished it. So you start off this amazing yeah. sort of like experience, and you go through episodes one and two, and it's just tremendous. Mm. And it's still great when you play it. Um, which because I did a few uh, months back. But then you you've got no free, so it's it's really difficult because you do invest in that world and that story. Yeah. Um, it does such a great job of making you feel amazing that game because there's you just hear radio broadcasts where people are chasing you and stuff. And do you ever play Half Life Two? Yeah, I did uh, mm. a lot because I had um, I had it on PC and I also had it on the Orange Box. It did so many cool stuff that game. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the big boat level, but they mixed it up enough that it was still quite fun. Um, and they did the horror level, which yeah, is Raven, Raven Home, Raven which Holmes. is amazing. You get the gravity gun. Should we do our top five then? Mm. See, mine are in no particular order. But well, if... I'll tell you what, I'll stop and go straight to the top five. So <laughs> we'll come right back with our top five. After the break. That's After the first the outro we've ever done. Mm. Go, in any order. go for a piss and then so top yeah. five, Tom. No, we'll... oh, unbelievable. So mine aren't in order, right? Uh, but Pokemon is in there. Blue or red? Blue. Sure, naturally. I but, think I went blue, but I think red's got the better options. Red, I think, you get Electrobuzz. Yeah, blue, yeah, you I, got Magma. Yeah, it's good. I think red's got the better lineup in general. But, so uh, red, see, had, red had Volpix. But, I mean, but blue was the one I had, so... Because Charmander's the best fire Pokemon, so my next best choice would be the next best uh, leaf Pokemon, and that's the one with the little Bellsprout. Bulbasaur? No, Bellsprout. Because if you've gone with Charmander... See. Well, oh, Bellsprout's right. alternative, so, which I think so. Bellsprout was blue, Oddish was red, and Bellsprout yeah. was better. Yeah, uh, Bellsprout's better than Oddish, so it's hands down. Yeah. So I've got blue and red in my top five. So and... on some Pokemon, who are in your uh, who are in your team? Like just any. any no, 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 no. Let's not do this because you're going to want to talk about Tauros again. No. I mean, all I'll say is no. You won't. All, say all I say is Pop a <laughs> best EV evolution. Get a Jolteon in there. Naturally, fastest Pokemon in the game. No, no get, Electro's. Get Pikachu in there. Again. Oh, yeah. Pikachu's better than Jolteon. He is, yeah. Yeah. No, so get not. Pikachu in there. Get Pikachu no, in there. Yeah, we're, we're not talking about just stats here. What are we talking about? The, the, the X Factor. What's your criteria? Because that's a whole list in itself. The, the X Factor is just a Pokemon. That, it, it's why you like. But, it's why you have a soft spot for Tauros. What I will say is, well, second gym, water gym. Yeah. Right. You can get a Pikachu before then. You can smash through that bad boy. Well, yeah. no, you use a Butterfree, but you've got to be careful because yeah. you can't yeah. level them up too high. 
And on blue, you couldn't get a butterfree. You had a bee drill, which was shit. Yeah, yeah. Was shit. See, there you go. That's why you get the, Pik- the Pikachu. In yeah, the but you have to scout round Viridian Forest, right? Yeah, it's but it's better because you can use it all through the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, so anyway, that's what else? Your five. No, that's my one. I thought we'd. You what, know, is it no order then? No, it's in no okay, order. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Pokemon. I think. I think it's difficult for me to separate because to me, Gold and Silver is a better game in every respect, but. Red and blue is magic, so mm, yeah, yeah, I'll go with Pokemon. You, is you, it not in your top five? Well, no, it's not. Well, okay, I've, well, I've, I've, I've thought about this. I've got some others in my top five. Well, I'll let Mark go. Uh, well, no, 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 uh, you do your whole top five. Well, well I thought he... Well, no, well, uh, why don't you just pause it? Alright, um... So you want me to run down well, the list? Well, no, I think, Mark, you need to chuck in one from your top five list. No, I, I think it just gets confusing. I think you do your whole top five, I'll do mine. All right, yeah, yeah. Do so, I mean, I'm, I'm chucking in mine. I'm chucking any FIFA in mine. Yeah, that makes sense. Super, super enjoyable for me. Big is that a crossover fan. for you, Mark, or is it not nope, for me? No, nope, no, no, especially not for you, Craig. So I'm just chucking that in there. Very enjoyable. Uh, KOTOR. Sure. Bloody loved it. Picked it up from the shop uh, because I was going to get a Star Wars game but I took it home, it was pre, uh, pre-owned. Oh yeah. And it didn't work when I played it, so when I took it back, I decided to get a different Star Wars game. So the one I was gonna get was like a hack and slash one, and then I ended up getting KOTOR, not realizing it was It wasn't the like the Revenge of the Sith game or something. No, no, it was like called Jedi oh, School or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Jedi Power Battles. No, it was something else. Yeah. But then I got KOTOR, nice. and then I sat there and I played it for seven hours straight the first night I got it, because <laughs> it was awesome. It was good. And I still play it, it's just great. Definitely in there. And then, what else have we got? Have I've you got... written these down? Yeah, so I, I can I, remember I've written, them. I've written my down. Uh, I've also got Halo in there. Yeah. Because super enjoyable to still replay. It's the first it's just... one? Yeah. It's not, I played it back through, and I think Halo 3 single player campaign got a lot of flack because it's bullshit, the actual story. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, like, but this is the thing to that... play through Halo 3's campaign and multiplayer, to me, that would be the best mm. experience. Yeah, I, I, I think 3, the multiplayer, was the best because it was the one, like, yeah. even the campaign, like, we, we you had everything you, you yeah. wanted. It even did the Warthog run at the but end. But then the first, Halo 1, the first one, the storyline is the best. Yeah. It introduces you to these characters that are great. The worlds that are really interesting and like built around them, and it new, doesn't and do new, some interesting. Very stuff of Cortana where it's like a love story. Yeah, no, it's separate. Like yeah, that. that's later on. And then definitely. you get to use all the vehicles; they're all there. You get <laughs> all the hits. Yeah, and the you're combat right. system is your scorpions, your warthogs. Yeah, scorpions, warthogs, bounties. You know, it's all it's dead simple. And it's all the there. level design's really simplistic though. When you play back through it, the some of yeah, the but levels they, is very at the time, you know, I still. Corridor. I still remember playing them from the first time through. Yeah. You know, you drop into that that first level where you drop into the valley mm. and you run around the valley and you get that, the water. What was the name so... of that level? Was it Silent Cartographer? No, that was later on. That oh, okay. was the one where you got the tank. That's yeah. the one I remember as Silent Cartographer. Yeah. I can't think, but it was it was super enjoyable. So what was that four for you? That's four for me. And my last one... Was three, was three. No, that was four, yeah. My, oh, last, okay. my last one would be Final Fantasy XI, which was an MMO which... RPG. Is that more online? Eleven. Yes, it was all online. You had to pay a subscription to use it online. And when we first played it, me and my friend, you it was impossible to do because you needed a team of six people to do anything, like level up. And who knew six people? Um, so you didn't know six people. So you'd have to get six people to play with, um, but you'd need at least one of each class to oh, play God, it. Yeah. You'd need like a healer and a tank and then damage dealers. Um, so it was basically impossible to ever do anything <laughs> uh, apart and then when you get to the end game everything was still so ridiculously hard uh, but it was super enjoyable I put was it was it PC PlayStation PC and PlayStation PS2. 2 oh, and right. Xbox as well oh right um, I put more of my life into that than possibly anything else <laughs> like I've, I've definitely spent more of my life playing playing that game than I have riding or being even at theme parks or water parks so is there an overriding sort of Mm, objective for that so game. there's a storyline throughout the game and then each expansion has storylines mm. but essentially the problem is I never really complete the storyline because it was so fucking hard <laughs> so you're just kind of stopping the bad things from happening saving the world isn't it yeah. yeah and it's still going since I think it came out in like 2001 what 11 no yeah. 11 came out obviously came out to 10 and 10 was 2006 Seven before I went to uni. Ten. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't. No. Ten was like two thousand, two thousand one. 
Because that was one where, where you were at school. Wait, no, I'm 12. 12 was 2000. And, so I remember my friend... So, Jeff, initial release date, 2002. Oh, okay. Okay, huh. so... And, and you can still play it. And it's <clears throat> totally different now to try and get more people to play it. But I spent so much time on it. Super enjoyable. <laughs> and it's, on... it's really addictive as well. So if you were like, oh, Tom, well, I've got this PC that's got Final Fantasy XI on. Would you like to play it? I'll just leave it here turned on. All I'll the... leave the room now. <laughs> yeah, all those MMOs are going to be like that. Any honourable mentions? Um, Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure, very enjoyable. Sega Bass Fishing, very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, stuff like Tony Hawk, spent a lot of my youth playing that. Uh, Battle for Middle Earth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as I discussed. Dungeon Keeper 2, specifically. <laughs> Wait, which one was Battle for Middle Earth? Because they did the films release. I don't remember anyone having a Fellowship game, but I remember oh, actually, Two Towers. Any, and... any Lord of the Rings games is usually Was there enjoyable. a Fellowship game? No, I think it was just Two Towers. No, it went straight to Two Towers. towers. Yeah. Actually, Two Towers, is very, I'd love to be able to play Two, two Towers again, but you can't because it's not back compatible. Yeah. Sort it out, Xbox. <laughs> So, Mark, what is in your top five? Or you just start with an honourable mention or two, if you like. Um, well, there's a lot of games from my childhood which I enjoyed, which I didn't put in here. There's things like Spyro the Dragon. Never played Spyro. all of those, like the Jack and Daxter games. See, there was a thing, wasn't there? There's all those attempts to... I wouldn't... I think it is fair to say they tried to duplicate Mario 64's success and get their own kind of mascot and, and I, 3D adventure. Yeah, I know what you mean, like... Spyro, he's Spyro. You love Spyro, the character you love, and it's like. No. And the thing is, I think they did manage it for a while with Crash Bandicoot. Well, that wasn't an attempt to. Th- Crash Bandicoot was very linear. Yeah, but, it, but so was. Oh, no, I know, see what you mean. No, no, so but, Mario 64 did the whole take a 2D concept and make it a fully realised yeah, 3D. Yeah, and there were little worlds you go into, but. I, I think that was like their mascot for a while, it feels like. Crash Bandicoot, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was good. I and, hate and, the fact you can replay Crash Bandicoot on the PlayStation 4. Because it's the same game. Yeah, it's the same game with a shiny skin on it. But the skins don't even look that shiny because they're still just the same old ones over. No, so, no, they, yeah, but it's not like it's not like it adds new depth to it. It's still yeah, yeah, it, it's it, still sand yeah, and trees. It's the same. It's the same game, but it's been polished. Basically. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Things on PC like Sim City, play to death. I was never. Did you ever manage to get a city that worked? Yes. That generated money without yeah. cheating. It was no. really hard. <laughs> no, no, I never did. Because <laughs> you, you had to build up slowly. You're like, you're always, when you first started, it's like straight away high density business. Yeah. But that would never fill up. So yeah, but to... I mean, I had the SimCity game when I was, it was on my first PC. So I had that in Jungle Book. So you can imagine yeah. me at eight trying to work out how to simulate a city. Yeah, you really have to try and build it, build it organically. Well, I was just trying to build everything. And just. Then... Oh, Your actually, parents actually, really trying to make you an architect as a child, and yeah. <laughs> it never really took off. No, my computer was so old. You know, you get like Microsoft Office. We had, um, oh fuck, it was called Microsoft Works, and one of them was Microsoft Finance. I no, remember not, that. Yeah, remember yeah, that, that as a yeah. package. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so sorry, carry on. I said another honorable mention, probably The Sims. Oh, yeah, I never played it. Really? No, I know everyone else. Everyone did. played them. Everyone played them. Every girl played them. Everyone played them. When we were like, people ten, still play when the it Sims. first came out, Sims One. Girls and Sims. still play the Sims. You're right. You're right. Girls do play the Sims, but Sims One, and Sims Two, when they first started, were a game called I don't want to cut you off, but Black and White. I played that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember all these games that I always had friends who had more than me, so they always had every game, and one of them that you would play religiously was Black and White. And yeah. They had like the Sims and stuff. So. I had Black and White Two. I remember. Yeah. Not sure I remember that one. You, you, had I mean, a, you were like a god, weren't you? You had a god, and you had a giant like. Avatar was like a tiger or a lion or something, yeah, and you could be nice to them or you could punch them. Yeah, it's pretty weird. Right, you better start your top yeah. five. Yeah, all right. Because um, yeah, I'm gonna go five to one on the list I've thought of. Are they in order? Are they? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, number five is it's a whole series, and I've put Guitar Hero slash Rock Band. Uh, I mean, it's great. I have to be terrible at they, every aspect of those were, games. There was a time when they were massive. Everyone loved them. They were great fun. And also, they did a lot. It's the same as like the radio stations on GTA. They did a lot to inspire people's music tastes. Yeah, like, there's so. Now I can back that up. And playing it with your friends is very, very enjoyable. Yeah. Yes. But there's a certain thing that taints Guitar Hero, which is just the image of someone playing it in their room alone. Yeah, with the getting <laughs> really good at playing. Is it what's the Dragon Band? Called? Oh, uh, through the fire and flames. Yeah, just getting really good at that, and then being like, "Yeah, guys, I can play through the fire and flames on an expert." Expert. I don't don't know if you've heard this about me. Sort of, sort of clicky clacking away, but 
Yeah, it just yeah, but like playing at the Friends Opening was so much fun. Yeah, and, no, there, I, and, there, and there were so many songs there. It's like, oh yeah, that sounds great. I'll look into that band. That because play. I had Guitar Hero Two, I had Rock Band, I had yeah. Beatles Rock Band. Yeah, all very enjoyable. Yeah, definitely. So that's up there. Yeah. All right, gonna... uh, Number four, I put Red Dead Redemption. Mm. Which... Never pl- again, never played, <laughs> but I, everybody who has played yeah. it loves it. So the story is incredible. And that was on the list as well. Very, very yeah. high up. The setting's incredible. It's great. You ride around the horse. You lasso people. You do missions. You have shootouts, gunfights. You know. Yeah, I mean, draw. I, you kill armadillos, which I remember yeah, doing quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, you hunt down animals. Take that, you stupid armadillos. <laughs> Take their pelts and sell them. Mm. You rob banks. Just yeah. How, how come you never played that? Well, I, I didn't. <laughs> See, <laughs> I just. Didn't. I mean, I mean, I I know a lot of people who played it and love it. It's yeah. just it never. I don't play a lot of video games these days, and like there would appear. No, you have a very limited amount of palette. Games that a very you limited yeah. palette, as we'll see. Yeah. Uh, next, I've got The Last of Us. Yeah. So actually, that tends to be now the one that tops a lot of best of all time lists. Like it used to be, Ocarina was pretty much a safe bet as number one, and yeah. now you've got Last of Us, which yeah. has almost eclipsed it as the. Yeah. I admit, I watched my housemate play it, and maybe it's because he could be better at video games sometimes. <laughs> um, well, it, it took a lot of... Um, you living with someone else I was wa- time? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching it going, that's all right. I guess maybe if I fully played it and immersed yeah. myself in it. And like you knew who the characters but were. But that motif of having the father figure it's so good. who's flawed yeah. is being done to death. And I but, think I've seen it in other... I mean, it's even in one of my games, it's a motif. It's that kind of thing, like, he's flawed and he's sort of rejecting the father figure role, but he can't help but get through But that's every, it. every theme. That yeah, and, and, does and that. I think they, zombies are so played out, but they, they managed to do something interesting. No, I liked what it. they did with the zombies, because it was very different. Yeah, it was kind of, of spore and fungus space. But also, the game isn't the point of it, the story is the point yeah. of that game. Yeah. And, so, and, and, no, but the thing is, there is something in the game, it's like, it's really scarce resources, and having to plan mm. out your fights, and stealth things. Uh, and the sequel coming out, which is going to be fantastic. When's that out? Next year or in a couple of years, I think. But yeah, on PS4, it's going to be. He's so not good. in it, is he? So far, they haven't put any promotional. Not material really. With him. I have a personal theory that he's going to be a ghost. <laughs> okay. Which I don't know if he'll do that. Because he's dying at the end, isn't he? Or he's no, no, no. wounded. Um, there's a point oh, where no, he gets wounded. Yeah, and you have to play as the girl. You have to play as Ellie. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Looking after him. Um, number two is going to be cross over Ukraine. Witcher three. Don't really know what to say about it. It's amazing. <laughs> Tom's not a fan. Uh, he was not in my top five, obviously. It's obviously. good. Um, I can't see myself playing through it again. I played through it twice. Maybe, maybe once more, but I played through it once. <laughs> I, well, I'll go into it later, but I it agree, just, it's phenomenal. Is the fact for me that you sort of had to not, you had to follow this set, this kind of set path. Whereas, see, that's the thing. That, I think that's what I liked about it. it. Was it's an RPG, but you're playing as an established character. That's what I mean. You're playing an RPG, but what you do yeah. doesn't affect a matter too much because I would have, I would have killed the emperor and assumed the throne <laughs> because who's going to stop me? I've got magical powers. All of his guards who, who the guard. No, yeah, I've, but, I've got magical powers. Yeah, but in the game, if you mess with anyone, the guards would mess you up. Well, that's the thing. Well, it's just you should be able. That's to, the thing with that game. Is you're never in a position where you're unstoppable. Yeah, you're just a guy. You're sort of in the world. Mm. But, no, um, it's an amazing, <clears throat> amazing game, and I just, I mean, it goes. What I was going to say is, a lot of the games that I have played are ones that I've invested in, and when you finish playing it, you feel almost like a gap in your life, which sounds sad, but it's <laughs> kind of like it's that. Sad. Well, no, but but that you've invested yourself. It's like watching a film, but yeah. you're part of it. Yeah, and it's like, you, you are sort of like, oh, I have to say goodbye to these characters now. Yeah, and when you say goodbye to these characters in that game, then it's, it's, oh, it's, that was sad. It was sad <laughs> to let it go. It was. And uh, my top one is, I've already said, Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, I Sense mean, I, I, it's, it's running around. that, you know, Tom and I both aren't real Metal Gear fans, because I know people who do play yeah. swear by it. Because so. if we could discuss the story, it would be... Well, I... I Jumped in. I, it would go on for hours. My friend made me watch the end of four, which was the PS3 yeah. one, right? Which is frankly baffling. Well, I was baffled, but he seemed to sort of yeah, yeah, be I... able to gauge some sort of sense. Out. Yes. At one point, there's a monkey. There is a monkey, yeah. There's a bit where you have to make it to the end of this like radioactive tunnel. Yeah. And like, apparently his thing was, you're as tired as he is because you have to bash the button so much. Yeah. So... 
because you have to upload an AI to a system to oh, stop global it. warfare. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's a wonderful series. You really should try. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's about it, really. Cool. So what's your, oh, are you pausing it? <laughs> uh, yeah, because... So I don't know if I can do a top five in order. It's too hard. No, but... I didn't do an order. It's, too, it's tough. Well, I've got my <laughs> top two, which uh, have always been better. I think Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one. Although I think Sonic 2 is actually the better game. I think Sonic 1, for how important Sonic it was Sonic 2 was me. more with Tails, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was more... It was just did everything better. <laughs> um, and I think it was before the series started to jump the shark a little bit, which it starts with Free and Knuckles, which I both really like. But... Well, at certain points in Sonic Adventure, you literally jump over sharks. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, there's a bit where you get chased by a whale as well. Like, it's a giant whale. Yeah. I mean, it, I think Sonic the Hedgehog 1, in terms of just me, you know, it, when you're a kid and you look at it with sort of a sense of wonder, which Pokemon captured as well much later on in my life, which yeah. is why sort of Red and Blue were up there in, I'd say, my top five for sure. Um, and then, I don't know. See, it's difficult for me because my top five could literally be made up of Legend of Zelda games. <laughs> Um, <laughs> why not but it won't but I would say probably number three it's difficult for me because I don't know just say Majora's Mask well I, Ocarina of Time is probably free because it's still amazing and it's still like the first time because like, I never played the originals on the SNES or the NES but you've got it's just a fully realised 3D world and you really get into that epic it's, you start off as a kid you become an adult mm. you can do so much with that world a lot of it now playing through is people just with one paragraph sentences <laughs> but I mean it's the fact you've got 3D characters there's like different areas of the map It's it was so huge for it's time yeah. so epic getting, getting equipment and locking new areas and yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff and like just that just capturing your imagination and it's just you know definitely one of my favourites it was that or Half-Life 2 mm, I can see why and I mean I pop an honourable mention to Grim Fandango as well <laughs> which nowadays is so hard I don't, I don't have the break. the thing is Grim Fandango is again it comes down to the story and yeah. the characters and what mm. makes it great the actual right. puzzle and gameplay the game of it itself bad yeah. I yeah. wouldn't even say it was bad it's just baffling like you said a lot of it is there are logic leaps you have to make yeah, and go I guess that works it's not intuitive at all no. You just end up rubbing every item you have on everything you can see mm. until the solution reveals itself. Yeah, there are literally points to that game where it's like, I don't know how you're supposed to work that out. Like, <laughs> like there's a, one or two bits where you're like, that's insane. Yeah. But it's such a cool idea with the whole sort of land of the dead and the sort of film noir. It's, it's, it's like the business yeah. of transporting souls to the that's, it's, it's afterlife is really cool. Yeah. But it's, it's one of those games, I think, and like I said, it's not in my top five, but it did pretty much bankrupt that sort of style of game and those companies because it wasn't as successful as it yeah um, it's remastered it's, you can get on your phone now mm. yeah yeah, it's, it's on Android and iOS Ooh. yeah and how much is that per go I don't know it must, be, it, like, it must be like a fiver that's alright I think anything, yeah. anything more than that is just yeah insane. who's paying more than that for a phone game uh, and then my top two would be probably at number two, Witcher 3. Yep. Um, I mean, like I said, I picked that up literally just to pass some time for the summer. And I remember you got more. it after everyone else did, I feel well, like. Well, you kind of sold me on it, and I was like, oh, I kind of like the idea of going monster hunting and kind of investing it, but the story and the characters are what really got me. And yeah. like, playing it back through, actually, because I've still got the last expansion to do, Blood and Wine, and you, the gameplay's sort of easy. You have to really push yourself to make it quite hard. Yeah, but once you, you, you once you work out what spells you want to use yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you want to fight, it's quite easy. Yeah, yeah. and like and you, you can do it so you you have the best available equipment at all times, which makes yeah quite easy. And going in with no knowledge of what came before, and then the whole thing with you and Siri, the daughter, which again is that same motif, is you know, and that's done brilliantly. The voice acting's great. The characters are great. Just the whole world is massive. There's stuff there which is untouched, even on two playthroughs with me that I still haven't seen and done. Um, There's too many question marks mm. in the map. Can't you? Can't. It's do a that. big map. Yeah. Um, and then I would probably finish with yeah, Majora's Mask, which is my favourite Zelda, and I think it's just so self-contained. It uses the same engine as Ocarina of Time. It's almost like a just make do sequel. Yeah. But it's a self-contained story, and it's very. Um, 
basically everybody's going to die in three days the world is going to end yeah it's that whole, it's that whole and you have ground, to keep reversing yeah kind of thing, you have it? to reverse them but you can make differences in people's lives and stuff but at the end they're all going to die anyway and it's yeah. done in such a way where it's still kind of accessible no matter what age you are I always found the moon a bit scary yeah it? and the moon is yeah, and it is very dark big smiling face on it it's very sort of like it, a lot of it is to do with life and death like yeah. the individual stories and stuff and mm. it's, it's beautiful it's just yeah my favourite game I think Certain bits of it now are still still amazing. Yeah. I need to give it another playthrough. I mean, it might be a case where Witcher 3 might even best it, but I don't know. To me, it's on a pedestal. So Yeah, it's hard to weigh up things like technology moving on, but also nostalgia. Yeah, it is very hard. Because you do have to account, like, yeah, if you played it now blind, not knowing anything about it, you probably wouldn't enjoy it as much. Yeah. But because of your feelings at the time, you kind of have to think mm. about that. Which is why stuff like Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot still is some people's list. Like, yeah, they're simple, but... If I could be pretentious, which I'm exceedingly good at, it'd be like having that girl... <laughs> exceedingly, just stop there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that girl you loved as a kid, and like you remember, like you look back and go, oh, that was great, great. And then if you were to relive it, you go, it's actually kind of nowhere near as good as I remember. But, you know... <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, there's a lot of games like that. Rose, like, rose tinted glasses. There you go. So that rounds off our podcast. Um, it turned into mainly a discussion of our favourite video games. You can check out the list. It's the top 500 video games on Polygon. I mean, this is subjective. It doesn't necessarily mean it's fact at all, I think, but it was a good... You, s- you say that, but people are going to cite that in arguments. Yeah. So I often now. <laughs> but I mean... If we're talking about things that are subjective, I just want to say... No offence to any paedophiles we insulted. That's true. We have yeah. lots of money from previous careers in TV and film and music industry that could come after us. <laughs> yeah, and if for whatever reason my mum um, listens, you know, I got over that Toys R Us He loved that bike. I've still, yeah. got, love that bike. I've still got that bike. I've got it framed on the wall. Yeah. We go out bike riding every weekend. <laughs> it definitely didn't end up down the tip after a few months with the chain <laughs> tangled up in the wheels. But, um, yeah. How bad at you were riding this bike. <laughs> but, yeah. It's where he was riding it. <laughs> yeah. Um, purple as well I had a purple bike yeah it was, it was very purple very like, <laughs> fem, feminine bike little um, streamers on the hand yeah, yeah. Like basket on the front yeah, yeah. Um, copy of no, Sims in that basket <laughs> we're going to divide this up we had microphone issues there so we had to stop every 10-12 minutes for reasons we haven't yet just worked out what's wrong but if you are listening still thank you very much and like and subscribe at the bottom Tom thanks for joining us you're very welcome <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there. We haven't eaten, by the way, and to... we've been drinking this whole time. <laughs> I so. sort of panicked there because I didn't really feel you were going to throw it back to me as well. Well, you you gave me the gave me the office, so I had. Okay, to, uh, well, I'm going to work on a catchphrase for next time. Sweet, yeah. That's the way the news goes. <laughs> it's like a dick, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> well, anyway, thanks again for listening, and we'll be back maybe Whenever. sometime soon. Pip pip cheerio. Bye. And silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'll melt into you What a fear in my heart But you're so supreme Try to survive for the day.